So guys what if Naruto was pervy emperor in DXD movie? It was the end of the war, the fourth shinobi war to be precise. It was a long and gruesome where a lot of lives were lost. Right now the shinobi had won against the freak army. Yeah they were freaks I mean zombies, plant man and snake dude, but lost a lot of lives. Against all odds they won all thanks to Naruto. He played a major role in defeating most of the tough opponents. Sasuke did too, but he came in late and he was fighting for his own reasons. Also he tried to kill all the other cages, but got his ass kicked by Naruto. In this one they didn't lose their hands because Naruto didn't hold back from the beginning. So here we are with the shinobi celebrating their victory. Well not everyone was celebrating, two people stood facing each other with various emotions running through them. They were Naruto Uzumaki and Tsunade Senju. The reason being a secret event that was about to happen. You see only two people knew what was going to happen but it didn't make it easier. Naruto was tired of this world, and he knew that once the war was over they would come after him for various reasons. This is why he took the deal that was given to him. A certain goddess approached him and told him that there was going to be a war in the shinobi world. She also told him that he would play a pivotal role in the war. But after that then what? She offered to take him to another world, meet new beings and be well Naruto and cause chaos. The challenge was that there was a bet placed upon him that he was strong because of his high chakra capacity. So if they sealed it off along with the tailed beasts, he would be reduced to nothing but a scared human. The goddess told him that they will give him certain abilities to use in the new world, together with a decent amount of magical power to start with. If he proved himself his old abilities will be unlocked, they will seal most of his chakra, and left him with that of an average genin, which will not increase no matter how much he trained. He agreed of course, and when he told Tsunade he got chewed on big time, but now the time had come to say goodbye. He didn't want anyone else to know until he was long gone, yes he did make some friends, but those that he considered true friends were outside the village. He had already written letters to them explaining the situation and promised to come and visit as he was allowed to travel through the dimensional gap. After a tearful goodbye and a bone-crushing hug, Naruto left giving one last look to his mother, not that he told her he considered her that, before he disappeared into a portal that opened up. The elemental would not hear of Naruto Uzumaki for some time. Goddess Domain Naruto stepped into the goddess domain. It was a semi-dark misty place with black and white tiles, a white chair, a small white dresser and another wooden chair. The place was like a void with a few stars, and it was very quiet. It was the sort of place one would like to go to enjoy some peace and quiet. This is the place that she resided. And there she was seating on her chair looking all holier than thou. This was the goddess Aqua, a blue-haired beauty but a closer look, and one would see that naive bratty look. In other words, she is a total ditz. Oh hello Naruto I see you are here she said in a melodic voice. Yeah I am here so what now Naruto relied in an impatient voice. Oh yeah here are the skills you will have, but there is a problem she said in a nervous voice. But now, what do you mean there is a problem asked Naruto with narrowed eyes. What the hell was going on here? Well someone changed your destination and abilities. They said it would make it more challenging than the place we wanted to send you. Haha <laughs> she laughed nervously as she handed Naruto a paper with a list of skills and their details and the destination he was going. We wanted you to go and beat up the new devil king that sprouted up after the other one was defeated by Kazi Trash. And I wanted give you a holy weapon too. Kazuhu now. What the hell. What's with these skills. They are trash, and they make me look like a total pervert even worse than that perverted toad. My rotten luck, Naruto slumped to the ground as he imagined what Tsunade would do to him if she found out that he turned into a mega pervert, he studied the skills he had. The Jade Dragon Sacred Gear, made after the sealing of the Jade Dragon Zirconus. Abilities. User blasts a powerful aura that damages and destroys clothes and armor. It has a power-up ability that activate if the user eats clothing preferable women's undergarments. Fuck me. Steal. It's a thief skill that lets the user steal an object, as long as the object is not carefully guarded or the user is skilled enough to bypass security. Naruto's brow twitched violently as he read what he got. It seems he got screwed big time. He read and reread again until he noticed something in the fine print. His prankster mind started running a million miles per minute as he could see the possibilities that came with the skills. It seems the one who chose these skills did not see the true extent of the skills. He started to cackle like a madman, well he is to be a pervert then fine, but the one who did this to him will pay dearly. But something caught his attention. The play he was going had humans, but it also had devils, angels and fallen angels. Those were not what concerned him no. What caught his attention was the minor race, Yaokai. Maybe just maybe this was the place they came from. Maybe he would meet up with his daughter and their descendants. He would have to do some investigations to make sure he was correct, but he hoped he was. Aqua just looked at the boy who was laughing like a maniac, okay I will go, Aqua blinked, then blinked again, she cleared her ears to make sure she heard correctly, let me make sure I hear you correctly, you want to go with these skills, she got a short note before some weird circles appears below Naruto, before he was slowly lifted up, Aqua came and hugged him, weird, before she did something and whispered in his ear, which caused his eye to widen as he disappeared, in a world riddled with war and death, where three main factions rule certain areas we find extraordinary being, 
beings that scare the living hell out of anyone at the mere mention of their names, among them were Albion, the White Dragon Emperor, and Drag the Red Dragon Emperor, these two were rivals who constantly fought. They were well known for their destructive capabilities which left wide-scale mass destruction. There were two other Dragon Emperor known for their unique abilities, but the first two were well known, especially the Sacred Gears there is Idian. But what most people didn't know was there was another Dragon Emperor out there, this one didn't like fighting but chose to terrorize humans just for the fun of it. He didn't go out to kill. No. He was more of a prankster whose victims were usually females. He loved how they reacted, so he took a human form and terrorized the female population. But his fate was like the rest of the dragon emperors. Being sealed inside a sacred gear, he wasn't angry about it, no. This gave him a chance to get an up close and personal with humans, to experience their day-to-day -day lives and their feelings. He was disappointed when he didn't get a human while others got theirs. He waited for many years but no luck, that was until he was assigned to this one peculiar peculiar human. From that time on he had the most fun ever, and his name spread in ways he didn't expect. Go Park. Naruto appeared in what looked like a park from what he read about this world. He noticed it was late at night, and also there was pain in his abdomen like he was stabbed. He looked down and saw a light spear stuck in his abdomen, okay what the hell. He looked around and saw a scantily clothed woman with black wings, oh great a fallen angel, just great, and he just arrived too. Behind him he saw a boy with brown hair who looked at him in fear of what happened to him. His mind started to piece things together, so the fallen was trying to kill this kid, and he just happened to be teleported in the path of the spear, what was that stupid goddess thinking? She could have teleported him anywhere like maybe somewhere safe or even in the middle of a lake was better than this. Goddess domain. Oops my bad said Aqua as she munched on some snacks without a care in the world. Back to the park. Well this sucked. He was ready to explore this world. But alas he gets killed the second he arrived. Who the heck heard of that? It's gonna be a joke to those jackasses. Someone was trying to get him killed. Unknown realm. A certain being sneezed before it went back to whatever it was doing. Back to the park. The fallen angel and Issei were surprised by what happened. Naruto thought the kid would make a break for it. But he just froze until he too was stabbed, okay that was stupid at its finest. His unintentional sacrifice just went down the drain, the fallen just regarded him before she took off. Naruto took out the spear and tried to stop the bleeding, but it wasn't working. His original abilities were sealed off so no super regeneration from Kurama, and without his chakra he cold and healed the boy and himself. As he fell down to accept his fate, he noticed a flash of red and saw a red girl with big boobs. From his position, he got a good view of her, you know what haha, <laughs> bad him. His heart suddenly beat so hard he felt the urge to take that piece of clothing he saw, okay, even when facing death his perverted side as a result of his sacred gear activated. He noticed her doing something that he identified as turning the boy into a devil. He also felt that he wasn't dying as he expected before he remembered what Aqua gave him. He smiled before a plan formulated in his head. Oh this was perfect. He wanted to learn more about the supernatural. And what better way than to join them. So he willed the item to not heal him as he waited for the girl to come to him. He knew devils loved humans with sacred gears. So this one won't pass him as she sensed his sacred gear. And true to that she came asked if he wanted to live to which he nodded. She took out a single pawn piece and placed it on top of his chest. While well, she chanted the incantation. He willed the item he had to temporarily accept the piece and make him into a temporary devil. The item had that ability, so it accepted the single piece even thought he had a sacred gear. The girl looked surprised before she called another one that took him somewhere. Well she took the other one somewhere else, looks like things were going according to plan. Next day, Naruto woke up from the best rest he had in like ever. He was in a bed that he could tell because of the blankets. He looked around the room, noting that it had a Victorian look and feel. It looks like that girl took him somewhere, because they had no info on him. Well he will have to cook up some story until he can trust them trust issues. He tried to get out of bed but felt someone holding on to him. The hand was soft and feminine that he could tell, okay what the heck, he was picked up by those girls the next he was sleeping with one of them, what happened last night anyway. He could tell she was also naked, so does that mean they did the deed, if so why can't he remember a thing? Did they use some kind of technique on him so he cold to remember? He looked at the owner of the hand to find she was a beautiful black haired girl. He also took note of some of her impressive features haha, <laughs> what, he was a young hot-blooded teenager. He quietly got out of bed found some clothes which he assumed were meant for him. He looked around the place until the girl woke up, they conversed a bit, and he found out that her name was Akeno, and that she was devil, he already knew, soon the other members arrived, a blonde haired pretty boy, a cute white haired girl and a beautiful redeed, okay wats with his dimensions and cute girls. He was positive that if he walked out of this room he would meet a lot of cute girls, they introduced one another, and Naruto gave his story that he was a traveler 
Kyler who just was at the wrong place at the wrong time, be hit it off with the members of the other members, Kaneko the monotone cute loli who likes sweets, Kiba the pretty boy and Akeno the biggest tease in the world, and Secret Sadist, they found him an apartment room to stay until he could start earning some money, he planned on writing some books, maybe recreate that pervert's books, since he was turned into one himself, no, his books would capture the hearts of many, so he decided to write about his previous life, he got some material to start his literature to start on his first book, he even found a publisher and gave them the story idea to which they eagerly awaited for the book, then he met the other pawn who was worth seven pawn pieces which surprised him, he also found out that the kid was a pervert, well looks like the club now had two resident perverts, if only they could turn that shrewd pretty into a pervert as well, then all the guys of the club would join forces and terrorize the girls ha, huh? no, he would rather keep his perverseness to himself for a select few and not tarnish his image, so they were given a rundown of what it meant to be a devil, which meant they first had to do what Naruto equated to D-rank missions, they were supposed to give out flyers and make contracts, this was a pain in the ass, but at least there was no equivalent of Tora in this dimension, the thought of Tora brought shivers down Naruto's spine, during the missions Issei had trouble forming contracts while Naruto got a lot, they asked him his secret, but he just said it was a trade secret, cough Naruto cough, also Naruto was always hungry, and he didn't know why, he ate a lot, but it did little to curb his hunger, it seemed that his body craved something, and until he finds out what it is thinks were not good for him, all in all Naruto had fun, despite his constant hunger, making new friends, and he was surprised that he was getting attached, he somewhat missed the action, maybe a little fighting would liven things up, oh he got what he wanted, he met a nun whom he befriended, and when she got in trouble, he and his pervert friend went and rescued her, his friend leveled up when he evolved his sacred gear while he hid his, after the successful rescue the nun joined their club and was turned into a devil as well, she lived with him as she grew close to him which surprised him as well, things were okay until he noticed something, there was something bothering Ria's, and it seemed the rest of the original gang knew about it, but the newbies didn't, it started off when Asia grew close to him, when they had their moments, you know those lovey dovey moments, she would have this faraway look and a look of longing which was quickly hid, this went on for some time until Naruto confronted her, she told him that she was okay and put on a smile, but Naruto knew better, he was a master of faking, and he could clearly see that she was in pain, she was only doing it not to worry the others, so what did Naruto do? Well he used his ninja skills to listen in, okay eavesdropping, on the conversation between her and her queen, what he heard was shocking, it seemed she was in engaged to someone, and from the way she talked about him, she didn't like him at all, so she was in an arranged marriage, a forced one at that, that wasn't good, since they were low class devils their opinions didn't count, so it meant they had to fight the jackass that matters sad, from what he could tell she hid it for some time, years from what he gathered, so that's why she wanted sacred gear users, this was to help her get out of that contract, it stung they were being used, but he understood, the girl was desperate, and any desperate person would do whatever it takes to reach their goal, so he quietly left as he devised his own own plans, being used or not, Naruto was a sucker for damsels in distress, so he went to Uppy training physically he was good, so he focused on magic and evolving his sacred gear, he also devised some countermeasures in case things went south, so he asked for some material from the underworld, this was just a backup the main plan was simple, beat the shit out of the jackass, oh that dude was gonna pay big time, and by the time he was done with him, high class be damned, his reputation would be dragged in the mud mahahaha, so he quietly left as he devised his own plans, being used or not, Naruto was a sucker for damsels in distress, so he went to upi training, physically he was good, so he focused focused on magic and evolving his sacred gear, he also devised some countermeasures in case things went south, so he asked for some material from the underworld, this was just a backup the main plan was simple, beat the shit out of the jackass, oh that dude was gonna pay big time, and by the time he was done with him, high class be damned, his reputation would be dragged in the mud mahahaha, now, it has been a few days since the revelation about Razor and Naruto threw himself into training, he wanted to get as strong as possible, so that he won't have to reveal his trump card so soon, because he had very low chakra he opted to master gen and level jutsu, which were useful for his fighting style, also he was happy that he could do tree walking and water walking, these were useful skills in the future, he then went on to sealing which was an art he didn't divulge much into, but because of his low chakra seals were the most viable option, since most of them didn't take too much chakra, on physical training he made gravity seals for himself, and right now those seals were up to insane levels, this was to increase increase his speed and strength, he was also focusing on getting reacquainted with the sword to sharpen his sword skills, most of his techniques were lost because of his inability to access more chakra, but maybe he could reinvent them using magic, he also started building profiles for the peerage, and what he found was not encouraging at all, yes the peerage had powerhouses, but it was also a nest for unresolved issues, which held back most of the team from their true potential, this was mainly directed at Kaneko and Akeno, Riaz was a good king, 
but she was weakening her fighting force by not properly training them and resolving their issues. Honestly if this keeps up those issues will have issues which will become an issue that would need an army of shrinks to deal with them. For now he focused on himself at the moment and his own issues, he activated his sacred gear, but it also awaked several problems. First was the hunger which seemed to be unquenchable. Next were his perverted tendencies which seemed to occur at random intervals. He tried to control them, but sometimes he would unconsciously do staff only to wake up in unusual positions. This was really starting to bug him. What if this happens when he is at school or worse during an important meeting? MMMH ha so sorry dude it's gonna happen a lot. I mean he woke up in Asia's room sniffing her panties, luckily she was out, which leads to the last problem, his obsession with undergarments especially panties. Whenever he is close to women he always has the urge to want to see or take their undergarments, that's the reason why these days he put too much weights on his hands and said hands stayed in the pockets. Well today was the day that jackass comes, how does he know this? Well simple, Rhea's paid him a visit last night, she wanted him to take her virginity, oh he wanted to very bad, he just wanted to ravish her until she cold walk and finish it off by eating her panties, every fiber of his being was screaming at him to take her, even his angel conscience seemed to have been corrupted by his dark side, had a flag with the words bang her cheering him on, but by sheer force of will he declined because one he wanted it to be special, not because she wanted to taint herself to get out of the contract, and two Asia was in the next room, so here we are, Naruto was heading the club knowing the jackass was there, he could feel his presence, the guy was strong that's for sure it seems that he is not just all talk, no he didn't lose his sensory abilities, he was late for the meeting, but he had to prepare to piss off a certain someone, the cult research club, Rias was not having a good day, she was going to come clean to the new members of her peerage, but was interrupted by Grafia who told everyone that she was engaged, the new members were surprised of course, except for a certain someone who was late, then he came, the person she hated the most, Razor came, and demanded she sit next to him, before he decided to be all touchy-feely with her. She just wished something would happen to save her from this situation. Then the door opened and Naruto came in holding some packages wearing a stupid grin, which faltered a moment when he saw what was happening between Rias and the soon-to-be dead guy, so he decided to take the first step to pissing him off. Grinning like a madman he went straight for Rias. Rias darling. How are you today sorry I am late, there was this black cat that crossed the road, so I had to take another route which also had another black cat, it's bad luck to cross where black cat crossed I tell ya. Everyone sweat dropped at the stupid excuses he made, who would believe that? That person has to be an idiot. Yeah I know what you mean man, I did that this one time, and we got beat up for peeping five times that day, said Issei, okay, so there are some idiots who would fall for that. The look on Asia's face showed that she agreed too, okay maybe not idiots but naive and gullible. Naruto reached Rias and did something that shocked the whole room, including the ice queen whose eyebrow twitched very violently. He lifted Rias and made her sit on his lap, Issei was crying and I'm tears, and Asia seemed like she actually wanted to cry, but was comforted by Naruto winking at her, Rias was surprised and blushing, and Razor was pissed big time, evidence, the room temperature increased by several degrees, pay more on what are you doing that my fiancé he shouted, who does this idiot think he is taking his property from him? Inwardly Naruto smiled, step 1 complete now on to step 2, oh hey, I didn't know we were having a party, Naruto said in a cheerful manner, totally ignoring Razor which pissed him off even more, R R no Naruto-kun we are not having a party, what gave you that idea? Akeno asked, she was glad he came and did what he did, it threw Razor off balance and gave Rias time to cool down, okay not cooling down, judging by the steam coming from her ears, okay so what's with the overgrown chicken over there Naruto said while pointing at Razor, again everyone froze as they stared at Naruto like he was crazy, he just called a high class devil a chicken and the dude was right next to him, Razor was now pissed off, no one calls him a chicken and gets away with it, before he could do anything however, Grafia interfered, please stop antagonizing Razor Sama and you Rias Sama control your pawn, said Grafia with authority that left on objections, everyone immediately calmed down, but the look in Naruto's eye told everyone that it's not over, oh not by a long shot, now that everyone was calm Razor addresses the elephant in the room, hey who are you and what are you doing to my fiancé? he asked with an angry look, Naruto looked at him with a bored expression before answering, I am the amazing Naruto Uzumaki, and Rias here is my lovely king, as for what I am doing well, it's a pawn's job to make sure that every need of the king is catered for haha, <laughs> you know what I mean don't you, the laugh came out as perverted, which caused Rias to blush at the connotation of the statement, while Razor fumed even more, outside it was okay but on the inside oh shit panties, panties, they are so close I can smell the virgin aroma coming from them, okay hands calm down, and don't do anything stupid please, 
Naruto stood up and took out the packages he had, the smell hit everyone's noses, and it was a nice well-fried chicken, he started passing it along to his friends, and when he got to Razor, he almost gave him some before withdrawing, he took a separate package and gave it to Razor, the dude opened it up, and his brow started to twitch violently, it seems this Yuzumaki kid was trying to get under his skin, and it seems to be working, what the hell is this? He demanded as he threw that package away and looked at Naruto with wisps of flames licking out of him. It's bird seed what do you think answered Naruto as if it's obvious. You could hear muffed laughter from the members of the orc when they realized what Naruto was actually implying. I know it's bird seed you idiot, but why did you give it to me? Isn't it obvious? You can't eat your kind after all, what are you a cannibal? Plus I think that's your cousin Larry in there and you don't want to eat your cousin do you? Oh man it's so easy to piss of this guy, perhaps he should add some bird puns to the mix, nah what he has is enough to piss him off. Little by little Razor was losing his cool. This no-name punk was making fun of him and his family, he just wanted to kill the brat, but with the strongest queen in the room it would spill disaster for him, so he went back to trying to convince Riaz to accept their marriage, Riaz kept shooting him down, saying that she would fight the contract if it's the last thing she does. On the sidelines Naruto was initiating a conversation of his own with the others, hey guys I just realized something, phoenixes are birds right? So is it ideal to call this guy a bird brain? Naruto asked with a confused look, fake of course. Issei cracked under the pressure and burst into laughter, oh man haha that's a good one, bird brain classic man so of the others joined even the monotone Kaneko was laughing, even if she tried to hide it. MMMH do you guys know what's one of the most pathetic creatures, is when it comes to courting females, a rooster, I mean look it makes its advances, and it gets shot down, so what does it do? It chases the female chicken until it gets what it wants, it actually forces itself upon the hen, dude a rooster can run when it wants to get some and that's absolutely pathetic to me, commented Naruto as he stared at Razor, making sure the guy heard him, said rooster, I mean Razor looked at Naruto and growled, are you insinuating that I am a rooster? Oh did I say that? I didn't say that but the situation proves my point, the girl is refusing you, and you are chasing her trying to force her, to me that's rooster character if I have seen one Naruto said with a grin plastered on his face, to be honest, he liked this new attitude of his, even though it had its issues, it's so fun pissing people off. Razor decided it was enough and told Riaz that she would marry him, whether she liked it or not, he really wanted to get out of here before that pawn made any comments that would make him do something he would regret, and why is Grafia not interfering when that pawn insults him, Riaz refused, of which Grafia said that the issue would be decided by a rating game. Razor went on to call his entire peerage, which showed he had a complete set of which all of them were female. Issei cried and I'm tears saying that his dream was already taken by another person. Riaz looked actually a bit shocked when she saw that they were outnumbered, and so were most members of her peerage. Grafia looked at the situation with a critical eye. She could see the uncertainty in Ria's peerage. She wanted to see how that loud mouth was reacting, but was surprised to see him grinning like a madman. She knew he would make another absurd comment. Ahaha you see. I told ya he is a rooster, how many roosters stay in a chicken coop, answer one because he boots out the others or makes them submissive, he then claims all the females as his own, that's just like this guy over there classic rooster move, by making an all female peerage razor wanted to boast, but the kid drained that out of him, every move he makes the kid finds a way to insult him, they don't insult our king like that shouted one of the lawless there as she tried to defend their king, Naruto held a contemplative look as he looked at the peerage, you know I also just realized something, if the clan inherited the phoenix healing ability, maybe they also inherited a few bird traits you know like the 5 second rule when it comes to mating. I heard the record for longest mating time for roosters was 9 seconds, and that was only because it spent the first 4 seconds trying to get it in Naruto commented again, while flexing his pinky finger, insinuating that something was very small. This served to piss of Razor and his peerage even more, he was basically insulting every male of the house of Phoenix, it was a man's pride, and this guy just insulted that, before they could react to defend their masters on Honor Naruto continued. So let's see, 5 seconds for 15 girls equals to less than 2 minutes, so a 2 minute sex marathon, that's kinda pathetic if you ask me, and you want to condemn our king to give up her freedom for 5 freaking seconds, hell no. You son of a, Riaz, Razor is going to give you 10 days to prepare yourself for your defeat, and you, Yuzumaki trash I am going to enjoy crashing you to dust, Razor finished as he looked at Naruto with all the hate that he could master, Naruto just gave him a thumbs up, showing he didn't care at all, but that Razor left, but not before Naruto was subjected to some Kai from the female members of Razor's peerage, the Kai didn't bother him he faced worse, but them gone a new problem occurred, and that was Naruto, what was wrong you ask? Well he basically turned into a chibi with his eyes glazed and a stupid grin on his face, with drool coming out of it, think of Aladdin from Magi when he pervs on girls, Asia knew what was happening, 
He was having one of those uncontrolled perv moments, it happened a few times at home, before he explained it her. That's why most of the time he slept chained to the bed and Asia kept the key until the morning. Sometimes it was so bad that he would drag the bed before he got stuck at the door, and all the while he was unconscious. Naruto started to walk like a zombie towards his target, Grafia. Asia called everyone to stop Naruto before he does something stupid. Grafia just rose a brow at this, she was the strongest queen the boy won't get near her, so all the peerage members tried to dogpile him but he literally and inhumanly wormed his way out of that as he dodged all of them, leaving them to eat the ground. With insane speed Naruto found himself in Grafia's valley of bliss, between her boobs, before he started to play with them, as he buried his face between them. Again think of pervy Aladdin from Magi. Grafia froze when she found herself being played with, she hadn't expected the boy to move so fast, or how good she felt when he played with her boobs, please note she is not married. The other members just froze as they saw Naruto coping a feel on the strongest queen. Grafia tried to get Naruto off her, but the dude won't let go. When she got him off he would just quickly come back again like he was being attracted by a magnet. Issei just mumbled lucky bastard before Naruto shot past him and was embedded into the wall. They looked and saw an emotionless Grafia with a frosty fist extended forward. She turned around so no one could see her blush before she addressed Rias to prepare for her match. Then she left. She left a stunned group and a Naruto who was just waking up from his perv moment. He felt like King Kong just beat the snort out of him. He only asked one question when he realized what might have happened. What the heck did I do? After Naruto's shenanigans, Ria's told everyone to go and rest up, and that the next day they will go to train somewhere. The place she said they would train was a private island that had a house which was top-notch. Naruto honestly wondered if he would also buy a house like this far away from civilization, where he would stay free from the hustles of the modern world. So here we are, the group was assembled in front of their king where they were strategizing. Ria's admitted that they were at a disadvantage against Razor. First he had a full set while they were eight, so they were outnumbered two to one. Next Razor had experience in the raiding games while they were novices. This was their debut, and they were going against someone who lost only twice. Naruto listened to the others as they talked back and forth planning their training and how to take down Razor. The dude was the biggest threat because of his regenerative ability and power, so they had to find a way to neutralize him. He sighed. What he was going to do would open a whole can of worms. They took him in and trusted him, and he hides staff from them. Maybe it was time to come clean with some things, not all. Okay guys listen up at this everyone looked at Naruto. He has been quiet for some time, so maybe he thought of something. Razor Razor may have the advantage, but so do we, please reserve your questions for when after I am finished okay. First he thinks that he will be going against Ria's in strategy well he is dead wrong, he probably has a profile of us especially Ria's and Akeno, since they are the biggest threat and their skills are well known, so I will come up with a strategy to beat them. Secondly he is going to treat this like a game, but we for us this is war for our survival. He might have experience in this game, but we have someone who has experience in war. Lastly he made one mistake, he has an all-female peerage. We have three guys with us so for our plan to work, so this could work to our advantage haha. <laughs> Everyone was quiet as they died digested what Naruto said. Naruto could see that they were noting some things that he said, and he knew that it was time for his big reveal. Naruto I have noted a few things that I would like clarification on, first who here is experienced in war. Ria's asked with narrowed eyes, she found it weird that there was no record of Naruto anywhere, so here was her chance to get some answers. Me of course, who do you think I meant? Naruto said before he went on to tell them that he was not from this dimension, but from another, he explained everything else leaving out the part that he now houses all tailed beasts, he was very vague on the full extent of his power, even though it was sealed away. He also explained to them about his sacred gear, which was the origins of his perverted tendencies, after his explanation everyone was shocked at what they heard, here was a boy their age, and he had already participated in a war, he was a freaking war hero. Kaneko was interested when she heard he could use chakra. The weirdest reaction he saw was from Ria's. The girl had stars in her eyes as she squealed while looking at him. Suddenly she was in front of him going full on attacku mode. You are a ninja right? She got a nod. Please say it. Naruto looked confused. Say what? You know, nin nin she said as she made a weird hand sign and a weird pose. What the hell? Is that what those mangas portray ninja? We don't say nin nin databeo. Crap Naruto realized that he has said something stupid in front of an attacku. He thought he got rid of that verbal tick. Ria's looked like she was in heaven as she started jumping, while she shouted Databeo, while posing in what she imagined was a ninja pose. Everyone looked amused at the situation Naruto got himself in. After 15 minutes trying to explain that it was a verbal tick, not a ninja catchphrase, they continued. This time Akeno asked, Naruto, you said that Razor having a peerage full of females is a bad thing. Why is that? Well let's say the opposite side is full of perverts what do you think will happen? Let's say they have a technique that strips them off their clothes, what do you think will happen? 
everyone could see the logic in what he said, women don't want to showcase their bodies in the rating games where almost everyone could see them, that would be a nightmare for them. We have two perverts here soon to be three said Naruto, as he gave a thumbs up to Kiba with the same mirroring him, Kiba felt a chill down his spine and wisely inched away from them. They will not expect us to use this to our advantage, it will catch them off guard, thereby eliminating the weaker ones before we focus on the threats. Let me tell you this here and now this is a battle to survive, so I am not afraid to do whatever it takes to win, well short of cheating of course. Even though I don't like it I am going to go full on pervy on them <laughs> the others looked at him like he was crazy, he made sense, but sacrificing one's dignity to win was a stretch. Now for training for now I am going to focus on Kiba and Kaneko at the moment, but let me say this, please I know you have some unresolved issues among you, a few members flinched at this, but don't let that get in the way of getting stronger, all of you have potential to become strong but your issues hold you back so please don't hold back, he will have to deal with this himself if Rias doesn't, but that will come after the match. Let's start shall we, Rias and Akeno you are physically weak compared to the others not including Asia, so we will work not strengthening your physical traits, will you help Asia and Issei train in magic, the others nodded at the logic, they relied too much on magical power, thus they neglected to train their bodies. In Echo and Kiba you rely on the strengths given by your individual pieces, you neglect to fix the weaknesses of said pieces, hence your weaknesses are already known, we will work on increasing your strength for Kiba and speed for Kaneko, while giving you some tips on increasing your strength and dodging skills, the two nodded when their faults were pointed out, it seems Naruto was good at this leading thing, they might just survive this, Rias felt a bit down, the training she planned seemed to be inadequate, and this showed that she was not doing a proper job as a king, Naruto simply took over, and he was doing quite well, if they survived this, she would have to ask for advice from him and step up her game, first thing Naruto did was give them gravity seals varying according the person's body, right now Kaneko had the most weight followed by Kiba, then Issei then Rias and Akeno, and last was Asia, next he instructed Kiba to cut down a tree with a bland sword by the end of the day, where he would increase the weight, the dude was having a difficult time moving as it is, increasing the weight would turn him into a pancake, he instructed Issei and the rest of the girls to run laps, while well, they get used to the weights, which left him with Kaneko, ok Niko-chan let's play a game called dodge haha <laughs> Kanelo was looking forward to some training, but the glit Naruto's eyes showed a promise of a world of pain, which was what followed as she was thrown into an obstacle course full of very painful and humiliating, purry, traps. Naruto looked in amusement as the girl tried to survive his course, he spotted and company before a thought came into his mind. Hey Rias chan do you know anyone with a natural affinity to water and is female, he shouted as they passed by while jogging, taking the time to appreciate those jiggling jugs, his say look he was about to die of blood loss, yes why? she asked confused, oh that's good, I am gonna need her panties, what? ok Niko chan let's play a game called dodge haha <laughs> Canelo was looking forward to some training, but the glit Naruto's eyes showed a promise of a world of pain, which was what followed as she was thrown into an obstacle course full of very painful and humiliating, purry, traps, Naruto looked in amusement as the girl tried to survive his course, he spotted and company before a thought came into his mind, hey Rias chan, do you know anyone with a natural affinity to water and is female, he shouted as they passed by while jogging, taking the time to appreciate those jiggling jugs, his say looked he was about to die of blood loss, yes why? she asked confused, oh that's good, I am gonna need her panties, what? Now, it has been a long a gruesome 10 days for Team Ria's members, well most of them anyway, when Naruto said he would train them, they didn't expect him to outright torture them in the most perverted way that came to his perverted mind for the girls at least, the training was productive nevertheless, say what you will about Naruto, pervert, molester and whatever but the bottom line is Naruto knew how to train a person, Ria's doubted that they would gain much in 10 days, she had planned to focus on Issei and Asia, since they were way behind in terms of combat, while others did their own thing to get stronger, she on the other hand, would come up with a strategy to defeat Razor, but Naruto threw that out of the window, the training he devised for them was most beneficial, if it wasn't for the fact that they had limited time, she was sure that Naruto would have brought the best out of the rest of the team, she was surprised with the improvement they had had, honestly, the guy picked up on their immediate weaknesses and tried to fix them, though it wasn't all the weaknesses, she surmised that the ones he fixed and the skills learned were suited for the upcoming battle, on the girls training he paid special attention to Kaneko since she was a fellow chakra user, the training course he put her through was perverted and horrific if not downright funny, honestly, she tried to make Kaneko show emotion for years, and Naruto made her show emotion on the first day of training, the course was meant for her to rely on her Nekashu instincts, rather than relying on her durability as a rook, the moment she stepped in the course she was bombarded by darts, darts a rant a problem for a rook, 
but the fact that they were coated with some stranger electrical substance, which increased a person's arousal was the issue. She could bulldoze through them, but the substance made her feel strange to say the least like she had a strange heat in her nether regions. Said technique is effective by touch, and not by the method Naruto used, on touch it's instantaneous. But when using mediums like darts it's severely underpowered, it worked to his advantage in training however, the more darts that hit you even if they don't pierce your skin the more aroused you are, hence you dodge for your dignity, or you would explode with pleasure when you reach critical levels. She found out the hard way when she got hit by too many of those darts, the poor girl was drenched between her legs, her eyes unfocused, and she had little control over herself. Naruto thought it best to end the session which was a mistake, because when he got close to her, she pounced on him, he dodged of course, but the girl was persistent. Coupled with an out of this world speed and strength and freaky cat agility she discovered in that state, well let's just say Naruto got more than he bargained for. It took three hours of Naruto running full speed and dodging for the girl to tire and pass out. The others just looked on in amusement and jealousy, Issei and Asia, as Naruto struggled to evade the girl and control himself. It seems the scent of drenched panties did wonders for his self-control haha, <laughs> well it was his fault for not explaining after all. After the fiasco the girl was so embarrassed he cold look at a male in the eye especially Naruto, she started calling him maelstrom of perverseness, much to Naruto's displeasure. He was not used to this new nature after all. So from that day forward, the girl dodged those darts like crazy, and her speed improved, that was until she was captured by the second trap hidden in the training course. A tentacle monster, where the hell Naruto got it, not as familiar, we will never know, the monster was all touchy-feely when it captures a female evidenced by its tentacles invading the girl's sacred place. Why this monster you ask, apart from the entertainment he got from the thing going all pervy on the girls, it taught Kaneko the art of dodging and defending from multiple angles. The girl got so good that it was like watching a seasoned shinobi waving through chaos while beating the shit out of opponents. He then taught the girl the basics of chakra control and channeling it to increase her speed and strength. This was a very bad idea because the moment she got proficient in it, Naruto found himself embedded in the mountain a kilometer away from their training spot. Ouch. As for the other girls Rias and Akeno got the same treatment as Kaneko, but for different reasons. For them he wanted to see how their speed improved as well as their reflexes, so he threw the girls into the course. Of course the first few time were horrible for them and entertaining for Naruto. Honestly, tentacles tentacles, that's what he named the tentacle monster, had a field day with them. They knew about the dart so they were prepared for them, but Naruto had cautioned Kaneko not to tell them about tentacles. When they came face to face with the monster that's when the entertainment started, Naruto and Issei enjoyed the show, while Kiba just averted his eyes, seriously this guy's has an iron will. Tentacles seems to have a thing for Apai from what Naruto could see with how he enjoyed running his tentacles over their huge jugs. Maybe tentacles and Issei were related in some way with how both were obsessed with Apai. As for abilities he focused focused on having them do defensive techniques and precision attack, the girls had strong magical power, but for their plan to work, he needed them to conserve as much power as possible. He had a Keno learn more water attack to counter flaming chicken. As for Asia the girl wasn't a fighter that much was true, but she was also a valuable member of their team, she was their healer, so he worked to increase her stamina and magical power, after that he told her to project her healing aura, so that her comrades from a distance, by the end of the training days, she could project her aura for about a meter and a half. As for Issei and Kiba he worked on their physical strength and speed, he spared with Kiba and swordsmanship to improve his already impressive abilities, he also had to beat that honesty out of him, that was for duels not life and death fights, that kind of thing was definitely going to get Kiba killed, as for Issei he spared within in hand to hand combat. The boy was pitiful worse than him, but he had power that's what counts, the boy also managed to evolve his gear and got a huge power boost and a cool attack. As for Naruto he mainly focused on training his body and perfecting his techniques, for the plan it was there, and so was the backup and the backup of the backup if things went south, he had a feeling that the grilled chicken had something up his sleeve, and it was going to be a pain in the ass, that's the gist of their training now onward to the frying of that stupid chicken. Cool hi. The gang arrived at the school which was the place the raiding game was going to be held. Naruto wondered if they perhaps had reinforced the school and put barriers to prevent damage. He thought that they would go to an arena of some sort and duke it out there. Well, he would just have to improvise the plan to suit the terrain. They got into the hall and Naruto's eye twitched violently. What the hell? This was supposed to be private event for the two concerned parties. So why the hell were there so many people? He looked at Rias who looked equally as shocked as he was, the rest of the peerage looked nervous for some reason he and the two other new members didn't know, so why was Naruto not happy? It seems someone saw it prudent to invite a lot of people to watch the show, 
he wanted to humiliate Razor, and doing that would need him to employ some unsavory tactics, it would have been easy without this much of an audience, it would have saved face for Rias and her peerage with what he was planning, after this he was going gain a reputation he didn't want, yet, they walked into the hall and immediately they were the center of attention, it seems the rooster and his hens had not yet arrived, now that he got a closer look at the guests in the room, it seems that they were very important people, well shit this wasn't good for the reputation of their peerage, even if he and Issei take the full brand of the hit, it was going to reflect bad on the peerage. So the introductions began and the more the introductions went the more depressed Naruto got, it seems Rhea's family was there, the fried chicken's family was also there, but worse, the four Mau the freaking Mau were here to watch the show, and worse, the big shot was Rhea's brother, there was also the Citri family and the president of the student council. What the hell was she doing here? Note they weren't told about her and they haven't gone to the familiar forest, there was also Sarah Erg and his peerage and this other chick and her peerage, he didn't like her arrogant look or how she put down Rias and belittled them, so he didn't bother to recall her name, there were other families available who belonged to the 34 pillars, I want to go home Naruto sulked in the corner with dark clouds hovering above him, Asia was trying to comfort him the best she can, but the depression was too much, finally it was Akeno who brought him back, RR looks like you are depressed, I know what would make you feel better, we are going to have a nice big bar back when the chicken comes, so why don't you put your game face on, or do you want the chicken to call you a chicken? At this Naruto miraculously revived with fire in his eyes, the onlookers were amused at this. Never I am going to fry that chicken Naruto declared with determination, Rias and the rest of her peerage smiled at this, looks like their trump card was back. MMMH that's one mean chicken if he wants it so badly, hope we can join them when our son wins, said Lady Phoenix, as she looked at Rias Pong, oh if only she knew who the chicken was, and by extension her head. So to pass the time Naruto manipulated everyone present into betting, the odds were against them that was clear with how many people betted against them, a few betted for Rias, all the while Naruto held a contemplative look on his face, are you not going to bet since you are the one who started this? Rias asked as she saw the unsure look on Naruto's face, she would have thought that he was sure they would win. I am, I am the luckiest person in all dimensions when it comes to gambling, so no one even if they cheat can beat me, what I am worried about is the result of the match, I am sure that someone is going to meddle with the match, so the result is less desirable, Naruto said as he went to place his bet, Rias was now worried, if Naruto wasn't sure if they would win, then they were in trouble. She waited for Naruto to place his bet before they head to the rest of the gang. Excuse me ladies and gentlemen. I bet that the match is going to end in a draw, and I am placing one billion dollars on that. Naruto announced. What? was hurt in the hall, this guy was betting on a draw when projections show a clear loss, and he is betting 1 billion dollars on that, with that much money, 90% of the occupants took the bet even the Mayu, for the Mayu Naruto, prohibited them from placing money, but a signed document, saying that if Naruto wins, they would do something for him, Rias and gang were shocked that they were likely to end in a draw, but what caught their attention was the money he placed, where did you get that much money? You had zero when you got here so how the hell did you get that much money? Issei shouted, he knew Naruto didn't have anything when he came here, so how did he get that much money, the others wanted to know as well. Well I started writing a book about my life story it was published about 3 weeks ago, when I checked my account today this is what was in it, glare from Asia, okay. I also did some gambling and cleaned up some casinos, said Naruto, as he showed them his account balance from the phone he had, everyone was shocked, Naruto was now a billionaire just from one book, and when did he gamble? That's insane they would have to have to get a copy of the book. I saved some autographed copies for you guys I just got caught up in a lot of things and forgot haha <laughs> as he scratched the back of his head. A few minutes later, after waiting for a while the team KFC finally arrived led by Rooster, I mean Razor and all his arrogance, the guy seemed so confident in his win that it unnerved Naruto, one look at the guy and he could tell that something was wrong, for one the guy seems to have a lot of hidden power than he had 10 days ago, it seems the plan was going to be changed again that's a pain, Razor greeted the guests and revealed that he was the one that invited them to watch the show, before they went to the wedding ceremony being held after his win, he approached Rias and her peerage, and told her that she still had the chance to spare herself of the humiliation to which Rias shot him down, gotta give the guy points for persistence, so Naruto decided that before the game starts he would have to enact part of his plan, first part, piss Razor off, so drum stick are you ready? He asked with a grin on his face, the rest of the audience were confused as to the name given to Razor, drumstick, what is he a chicken, haha <laughs> if only they knew, you have a big mouth do you, well I am going to shut it up permanently, Razor replied with a cocky smirk, whatever you say KFC, but thanks a lot man, you literally brought an all you can eat buffet haha <laughs> said Naruto, as he looked at the various girls Razor brought while licking his lips, this sent a shiver down every female spine, 
whatever this boy was planning won't bode well for the girls. Razor just huffed and left with his team as they were teleported to the stage. Sona approached Ria's and said good luck. Ria's made the mistake of saying that Sona had an affinity to water. She totally missed the glint in Naruto's eye when he heard that, so Ria's and her team left for the teleportation circle. But Naruto hung back to talk to Sona. The team stepped into the circle before they heard a panicked Naruto shouting, teleport us now shouted a panic Naruto as he pocketed something, and he looked like he was running for his life, behind his was a very scary, very pissed and very flushed Sona who was casing after him, but if you looked closely she was running funny, her strides were limited, and one hand was holding her skirt, give it back you thief so I can murder you, she shouted, Naruto jumped into the circle and they were teleported into the arena, leaving a very pissed off Sona who left with her queen to get something, the rest of the guests were confused, it seems Rias picked a very weird pawn, the gang was teleported to the battlefield to which they discovered it was a replica of the school as Rias explained, before they started strategizing Rias turned to Naruto with a scary aura about her, what did you do to Sona? She asked in an all too sweet and too dangerous voice that promised pain and agony if the answer was not satisfactory, the game be damned if the answer she got was not satisfactory about what he did to her friend she would eliminate him herself, Naruto started to sweat bullets, he chuckled nervously as he answered, the haha I took the other key to our victory from her, please don't kill me, Rias just sighed at Naruto, she had an idea about what he took, but how did he do it in a room full of people without anyone noticing it, okay captain what's the plan? She asked Naruto, since he said he would plan she left the commanding seat to him for now at least. Okay step 1 piss Razor off is done, step 2 get the key to our victory is done, now on to step 3 leave Rias to plan haha. <laughs> what? I thought you were the one with a plan shouted Rias, this plan of his was confusing her. Yes I do have a plan, but for it to work we must make it look like you are the one who is planning, he has infer on you, so he probably has been looking into how you think, so let's give him that, but we will put a little spin to it, Naruto said with a predatory grin. Honestly for someone who claimed to be an idiot in his homeworld until recently he was a genius if not an evil genius or the devil himself, he is making the enemy think that they are facing an enemy they know, but it was the exact opposite, the moment the enemy thinks they are about to win, that when they will discover it was all a trap. So Rias came up with a plan to advance into Razor's territory while defending theirs, they would intercept Razor's team in the football field, the gymnasium and the hall. Razor will try to sneak some of his pawns so that they will get promoted, Rias will intercept those, it was a good plan according to Rias, but it was a defensive plan which needed some editing, ok I get the plan, but what I want you to do is fight not to win, what we need is to take them out at the same time, so we lure them in the field, where we can try to take most of them out, what we need is not to waste our power until we fight Razor, and trust me from what I can tell it might take all of us to beat him, so when you engage fight them, piss them off then retreat, after that leave the rest to me, and remember don't eliminate any of them we need them until they serve their purpose, okay this was a crazy plan, what the hell was he planning to do with those poor girls, okay what about the pawns looking to be promoted, this time it was Akeno who asked, if he wanted all the girls not eliminated what do they do about those pawns, let them get a promotion, the more power they have the better Naruto replied as if it was not a matter of concern, the others looked at him like he was crazy, what the hell does the enemy getting more power make it better for them, they were now starting to reconsider letting Naruto lead this operation, now let's get the show on the road shall we, Naruto declared with a maniacal grin plastered on his face, okay now they were almost feeling sorry for those poor girls, best viewing room, ladies and gentlemen welcome this prestigious rating game, in the blue corner we have team Rias, and in the red corner we have team chicken I mean team drumstick, what the hell is wrong with the announcer insulting our son's team like that asked a very angry and somewhat embarrassed Lord Phoenix, note Grafia is not the announcer, I don't know, I wanted Grafia to do the announcements, but this guy insisted answered Serzich's, he found it weird that this guy insisted on being the announcer, but he didn't pay that much attention to it, Grafia stood to the side of her king, but her attention was on the rating game specifically on a certain someone, sorry about that ladies and gentlemen, okay in the red corner we have team KFC fuck, oh team KFC I like it, way to introduce Introduce our son's team, said Lady Phoenix with a smile, many people sweat dropped at this. Ah Lady Phoenix how long have you visited the human world asked Seraphal. About 200 years ago why? She asked. Well KFC is not a cool name at all. It means Kentucky Fried Chicken haha <laughs> answered Seraphal as she laughed nervously. Lady Phoenix processed what was said before she blew a gasket. What? Who has the audacity to insult my son like that? They have to be killed in the most painful way possible shouted a now flaming Lady Phoenix who was being held by her eldest son, sorry I meant Team Rooster I mean Rooster damn what is wrong with me, I think I am now starting to see a connection here this was Akuja the smart one, oh and what is it, came a sleepy voice from a very sleepy looking fellow, the theme is chicken, so he is refereeing to Razor as chicken and by proxy the rest of the clan too, my guess is someone did something to the announcer, otherwise the announcer won't have said something like that Akuja deduced the situation, who in their right mind would insult the Phoenix clan, 
Do they have a death wish? Replica orc, what did you do to the announcer? Ria's asked as she folded her arm while glaring at Naruto accusingly. What make you think I did anything? Naruto asked putting on an innocent face. All he got was a deadpan look telling him that they didn't believe him. Okay I placed a Jinjutsu seal on the announcer. It's nothing major. It just confuses those with a weak will for a while. It won't be effective against strong-willed opponents. And why did I do it you ask? Well to further piss of our meal. Now I think it's time we fry this chicken, don't you think I have? I think I am now starting to see a connection here this was Akuja the smart one. Oh and what is it? came a sleepy voice from a very sleepy looking fellow. The theme is chicken, so he is refereeing to Razor as chicken and by proxy the rest of the clan too. My guess is someone did something to the announcer, otherwise the announcer won't have said something like that Akuja deduced the situation. Who in their right mind would insult the Phoenix clan? Do they have a death wish? Replica Orc, what did you do to the announcer? Ria's asked as she folded her arm while glaring at Naruto accusingly. What make you think I did anything? Naruto asked putting on an innocent face, all he got was a deadpan look telling him that they didn't believe him. Okay I placed a Jinjutsu seal on the announcer, it's nothing major, it just confuses those with a weak will for a while, it won't be effective against strong-willed opponents, and why did I do it you ask, well to further piss of our meal. Now I think it's time we fry this chicken, don't you think I have? Now, replica new school building. A certain fried chicken was pissed after hearing a few jabs from the announcer. He knew that that blonde pawn had something to do with this. Oh how he wanted to burn that smug look off his face and enjoy his screams. But no need to end the fight quickly now. It fun to see those insects try to put up a fight only to fail. It only makes his victory that much sweeter. How dare he insult us Razor Sama, after we win that announcer is going to pay. A blonde haired girl with her hair tied into two drills, one on each side shouted, oh she knew that the announcer just stomped on their pride, and they won't let him get away with it, oh and that cute blonde bastard pawn too, wait what he is not cutie as the enemy, but those whisker marks make him look so adorable, oh shut up, oblivious to the inner thoughts of the blonde don't mind him sister, I suspect that it's that blonde bastard that orchestrated this, Razor stated as he claimed his sister down, okay we have our plan and we have the advantage, we are a full set meaning we outnumber them, and also we have experience with these games, so our victory is guaranteed. We will counter their strategy while we sneak in three pawns into their territory. Once they are promoted we will overwhelm them until no one is left standing. So don't hold back and if anyone gets their hands on that blonde pawn, make him pay high was the answer he received before his peerage got ready to deploy. Replica Orc. Riaz and the others were ready to put their plan in action even though it sounded weird. They had decided that they would make traps around their territory to keep the pawns occupied while they handle the other part of the plan. No need to tip the enemy off that the pawns got promoted on purpose, although many of the team doubted this was a good idea. Why in the hell is it okay to give their enemy more power when they were outmatched and outnumbered? The only explanation they got was you will see. So Akendo went out to set traps while the rest grouped themselves. Riaz was with Asia as she was to protect their healer. They were to remain behind in their base until the appointed time to join the battle. Akendo was to hold the enemy queen off as long as she can. Kiba was with Kaneko and Issei. They were to intercept the enemy in the gymnasium because it was a strategic point and the enemy was bound to send some powerful forces there to secure a foothold. Their aim wasn't to gain that strategic position, but to piss the opponent off so they case after them. Then there was Naruto. His job was to hold the enemy at the sports field alone, which was crazy, but so was he, well to some extent. So this was the plan which their freedom depended on. This was their first rating game which was watched by a lot of important figures, so they had to make a good first impression. Yeah good luck with that, and they had to survive. So so no pressure there haha. <laughs> Best viewing room. It's about to start guys. Oh this is so exiting. Who would have imagined that Ria's Tan's first rating game would attract such a crowd. Go Ria's Tan go. Shouted the ever cheerful Seraphil as she cheered for Ria's team. She was rooting for Ria's team. Even though the odds were against them. They were at a severe disadvantage. But as she learned in the war they fought. There is nothing more dangerous than a cornered animal. Or in this case cornered devils. The odds are against them for sure. But hope they will pull through. Plus I want to see how strong the holder of the Red Dragon Emperor is. This was the semi-battle maniac's comment I mean Sererg. When he heard that his cousin reincarnated a holder of a long Inus, which also happened to be the Red Dragon Emperor he got excited. He wanted to see how strong strong he was so that he could fight him someday. He is a guy who loves a good fight after all. Sarah Erg, Sona and the other chick, Sekfera, were all assembled in their own corner as they watched the game. These three plus Rias were considered to be the rookie four in the underworld. Some believed they would go on to become mass in the future. So for them to witness the first fight
side of one of their own was a big deal. This fight seemed to be about a girl trying to earn her freedom, but it was more than that, it was about showing the world just how strong Rias and her peerage were and live up to the title bestowed upon her. If she lost then then it would mean that their power was overestimated and that would make the whole group targets, as many teams would want to get a piece of them, not that Sarah or Gwold welcomed the challenge, so again no pressure. Sona was also worried about her friend, she was worried about the odds that were not in her favor, not to mention that Razor was powerful, yes she also has some good pieces, but they all had issues that were holding them back, the Red Dragon Emperor's holder was also a newbie and untrained, so he would cause little impact in the match. Even if by some miracle they take out Razor's entire team they still had to neutralize him, which was easier said than done, all in all Rias was screwed, and Sona could only hope that by some miracle her friend can win, well after that pervert got his ass kicked hard, after that she was going to murder him in the most painful way possible for what he did, thus thinking about it made her made her blush which was controversial to say the least. That tomato better not embarrass us, said a certain stick in the mud. Don't worry my cousin will make it Sarah Erga shorter, but received a snort in return. Everyone was looking forward to the match, the Mayu were also eager to see the fight, although a certain tomato was now regretting not training his sister, too bad someone was already doing that and would most likely be doing her soon, a shiver ran down his spine before. Never I will kill that bastard shouted Tomato Head as he stood up abruptly before he was forced to seat down by a punch to the head from his queen. Lucifer Sama please behave yourself, she said in a monotone voice earning a yes mother from the pouting Mao. It seems Grafia still hasn't forgiven him for what he did and takes every chance she gets to beat the shit out of him, he still regrets that decision, but what's done is done, he only hoped that she would let it go or it will continue to eat her up. What the hell man Ajuka asked surprised by his friend's outburst. I just had a bad feeling someone was about to violate my precious Ria's tan, nobody does that that to my sweet sister and lives, so what do you say? Up for some hunting old friend Heha replied Tomato as his features took a devilish look and a dark aura manifested around him. Everyone in the room had one thing on their mind, that's one hardcore Siskin, although some did wonder why he didn't do that to the fried chicken, somewhere unknown. The figure was also watching the rating games, this figure was shrouded in darkness, so no one can see if it was male or female, except for the structure which showed that it had a human body, it was looking intently at its screen more specifically on Naruto. Now let's see what you can do in this situation, the one that escaped my grasp, Soon I will take you as payment, the figure said in a distorted voice, but you could hear the frustration and anger in its voice. Rating game. The games had officially started and everyone was doing their assigned duties, Team Riaz was following through on the plan, while Team KFC was deploying their counter plan, Akeno was laying low waiting for the enemy queen to show, while also monitoring the three pawns that had stumbled into their trap field, Riaz and Asia were hanging back for now until the time was right. Team Kiba headed for the gymnasium while Naruto headed for the sports field, they were sure that Razor had divided his forces to intercept them at these specific points, which was what they wanted. The guests at first thought it was a good plan to secure the gymnasium, since it was a strategic point that could give either side the advantage. What confused them was the grouping, yes, it was good to send more numbers to the gymnasium, but sending one pawn to take the sports fields was kinda stupid. Sona was confused as to why her friend would make such a mistake, since she was good at strategizing, a certain family of fried chicken was smiling, seeing that victory was assured and that the idiot that insulted them was going to get what's coming to him. Replica Gymnasium. Team Kiba, since he was in charge, arrived at the seemingly empty gym. Kiba wanted to hit and ambush the enemy but suddenly the lights turned on showing that the enemy was already there and was alert to their presence. So the team decided to confront the enemy, and what they saw made the worried a bit, there were three pawns, one knight and a rook, and from what they heard from Akeno, three pawns were trying to enter their territory, the queen hasn't shown herself yet, as well as the king, meaning those two were most likely at their base, waiting to see how things go. So this meant that either the rest of the team were on standby, while a small force was sent to Naruto's location or replica sports field. Naruto just arrived at his destination, and when he saw saw what was waiting for him, he only had one thing to say. Oh, crud. Replica Gymnasium. Team Kiba prepared to battle the pawns Mira, Kira and Maru, the Rook Isabella and the Knight Karaman. Kiba would take the Knight and Kaneko would take the Rook, while the rest were left for Issei who complained. But when he thought of Naruto's predicament he steeled himself, but not before muttering a not-so-silent prayer for Naruto. Oh may the pervy gods receive my fellow pervert soul, as he will be sent to you by so many beautiful women, muttered Issei with tears streaming down his face. Boy I heard that shouted Naruto through the communication link. And so Kiba started off by challenging the pompous knight by exploiting her honor, 
He drew his sword while she drew a flaming sword, and the two clashed, at first it seemed that they were at a stalemate as they matched each other strike for strike. Harriman decided to go for speed as she blurred out of existence, surprising Issei by the speed she moved at. She appeared behind Kiba and went for a vertical slash, which was blocked surprising her, Kiba just smirked, that hellish training Naruto put him through paid off. Harriman shook her shock off before she disappeared again and tried attacking from different angles, but was met with the same result which frustrated her. She was frustrated even more when she noticed that her opponent was using just one hand, and he was matching her strength WHI8 with the other hand was in his pocket, this pissed her off, and a pissed off knight tends to make mistakes. Isabella engaged Kaneko in hand-to-hand -hand combat, both fighters were throwing fists and kicks at each other, which met in the middle, creating some bits of shock waves. Isabella then tried to use her height advantage to overwhelm the smaller fighter, but Kaneko used her cat-like agility to wiggle away and evade her attacks. This went on for a while frustrating the Isabella as she cold finish her opponent for the glory of her master. Kaneko just kept her usual monotone face, making it seem like she was bored which she was. This served to further piss off the opponent who thought they had the advantage. Kaneko then did something that shocked those present bar her team and the viewers. She moved at night level speeds and punched her opponent in the face. Said opponent found herself embedded in the walls of the gym, seeing stars and other weird creatures circling her head. She wasn't knocked but so she was still in the game, but this slowed her down for a bit, her rook durability didn't do jack to keep her from taking damage, oops might have overdone it a little we still need her commented Kaneko, as she looked at the battle Issei was fighting, while she waited for her opponent to recuperate, best viewing room, everyone was surprised by the show of skill Ria's team was showing so far, did you see the speed that rook moved at? That was night level speed which should be impossible for rooks commented one astonished guest. Most of the rooks from different peerages among the guests were impressed by Kaneko's show of speed and strength. They were all wondering what kind of training she went through to get this strong and fast. The knights were also impressed by Kiba's show of strength and skill. The conclusion everyone got was that these two were holding back way too much, and they were not even hiding that fact. The other members of the rookie four were amazed by the display Arius peerage were showing. Sona was surprised the most. She knew they were strong from the occasional spars they had, and she knew that her pieces could match Ria's. But this was a surprise to her. When and how did they get this strong? Sarah Erg was grinning like a madman at the show of strength his cousin's peerage was showing, and also at the prospect of getting a good fight, Sikfara just snorted at this. The Mayu were also impressed Serzich's even more, from the training his sister's pieces got they didn't show this much skill and strength, it made him wonder who trained them, and who much they have grown, he only wished he had done more to train them and his sister like a proper big brother. Back to the fight replica gymnasium. They HHH what the hell is wrong with you poor Issei was busy running for his life from the twins wielding chainsaws, for cute girls that was kinda creepy to say the least. The other pawn Mira was also trying to smash him with her staff. Once upon a time, he would have put his masochist abilities to the test by being whacked continuously while recovering miraculously. But this is the new Issei one who was trained under Naruto, and the lesson that stuck the most in his perverted head was dodging. And so the pervert was wiggling through the girl's attacks in weird but effective poses. The pervert was effectively dodging staff and chainsaws in the most bizarre ways that even the enemy was surprised. Hey stay still so we can cut up shouted a pissed off Kira with her sister hot on Issei's heel. Are you crazy? Why the hell would I do that? And you girls are supposed to be cute, not psycho crazy chainsaw wielding maniacs Issei fired back as he dodged a strike from the staff wielding pawn. This went on for a while with Issei dodging and blocking the staff using his sacred gear gauntlet. The fight ended with Issei managing to break Mira's staff and tagging Kira on the shoulder. He then put some distance between them all the while smirking like a maniac. Now feel the wrath of my new technique, dress break shouted Issei as he clicked his fingers together, and Kira's clothes were ripped to shreds, leaving her in her underwear in the anime she was left naked, everyone who was fighting stopped what they were doing in shock. Aha yes I have saved this lovely image into my memory banks, take that Naruto senpai. I have created the ultimate pervert technique, stated a grinning Issei, as he ogled the almost naked girl who was struggling to cover herself to no avail. Entai Issei, you are trash came the monotone voice of Kaneko, while Kiba was profusely apologizing for Issei's behavior. Hey I will have you know I can top that, and as the girl completely naked Naruto asked through the link, he got a she is still in her underwear, then he replied with good which confused his team. Best viewing room, there was absolute silence in the room until, it just happened right, yap, z z z z z z z z Wake up you jackass. Back to the fight. The enemy was now officially pissed off. This was evidenced by the Kai that was emitted by the girls. The naked girl was the first to chase after Issei with intent to kill. I strategic withdrawal. 
Issei shouted as he took off leaving a cloud of dust and teammates behind, Kiba just nodded to Kaneko, before they both took off in the direction of the sports field, the pissed of girls abandoned their strategic position, which they conquered in favor of pursuing the enemy, Issei, leaving the position with no one to claim it but Naruto, after he arrived at his destination, he discovered that the enemy was waiting for him, the number thought is what put him off, the rest of Team KFC except the chicken and the queen hen were not there, from what he could sense they were still in their base of operations which was good for him, by the time the chicken can realize is what's happening, it will be too late to react haha. <laughs> so he was dealing with one knight, one rook, two bishops and two pawns, the rook looked strong from the way her power was and the way she carried herself, so how to handle this, well he could instigate an all out brawl with all of them or take them on one at a time, well he waits for the rest to fulfill their part of the plan. Oh my look at this we have ourselves the rude pawn who insulted our family, honestly what was Riyasama even thinking wasting a piece on someone like you? Maybe she did it out of pity, you look like a commoner among the commoners, said a girl who felt like the fried chicken but weaker, so there is another fried chicken here, and it's a she, oh this is so good. Hey miss stick in the mud I will have you know chicks dig my look, and beside who are you to talk to me like that? If you want to go at it be my guest. Naruto shouted back with fake anger. Oh my apologies I don't fight, and certainly not with commoners like you she replied haughtily. Who said anything about fighting? I said if you want to go at it if you know what I mean Hey, <laughs> Naruto fired back with a pervy grin while wiggling his eyebrows, it took a few seconds for the girls to realize what he meant, which sparked that righteous female fury, I don't think it righteous among female devils, oh this pervert was gonna die slowly and painfully. Another Kai broke through the pocket dimensions barrier and settled on Naruto full force although he was not phased, he could only assume it's the girl's parents. The nerve of you asking a maiden such as myself to do that with you, stuttered the red-faced girl which got Naruto to raise a brow, before he could continue the rook stepped forward. This allow me to pummel him into the ground for you. This one was wearing a revealing Chinese outfit with a nice rack from what he could see. She sort of reminded him of Ten Ten. So he dubbed her Ten Ten Wanab. Okay, so one at a time it is. The girl rushed at him with impressive speeds, her fists igniting in flames as she tried to hit him. The girl was good with her Chinese martial arts, and her flaming fists would have been a problem for most people, but not him. So he was merely blocking and dodging her as he studied her while buying time. Said girl, Shui, was getting frustrated. He was only just a pawn with no sacred, they didn't know, so why was he being difficult to defeat, she decided to switch things up as she added a few kicks hoping to hit the bastard, she got the desired effect when she nailed him in the face, eliciting blood to come out of the pawn's nose, she smirked as she tried to retract her leg, only for it to be caught in an iron grip which surprised her, she tried to pull her leg, but the pawn wouldn't budge, the pawn slowly shifted her leg a bit upwards, showing his bloody nose, she expected to see anger in his eyes, but she saw Mater squawk, the boy wasn't angry, and he wasn't even looking at her face, so where was he looking? Under her skirt with pervy grin plastered to his face as more blood gushed out of his nose while her appreciated her undergarments. The A.A. squawked the girl as she miraculously pulled her leg away and got some distance while covering her undies. Her face was beat red from embarrassment. A nice undies girl Yao've got good taste. Now would you mind handing them over? Said a now pervy Naruto while he was making a bring the motion with his hands. Said girl took a few steps back while Naruto to a few steps forward. He would have taken more had he not been forced to dodge a blast of energy from the other bishop. Hey wait your turn I am coming for yours next shouted Naruto. While comically pointing at the bishop who felt a chill down her spine. So the five enemies decided to attack at the same time. While sister fried chicken hang back. No matter what they did. That pawn seemed to get himself out of danger without a scratch. It was like he was just toying with them. Oh no they fell for it ought the bishop. Travel. he was this strong, and he egged us on to think he was weak, and was he molesting her team? Said boy was having the time of his life dodging and molesting the girls, he would wave through the attacks, lift up a girl's skirt, then peeked while holding his chin in a contemplative look, he would also appear behind a girl, and start groping her boobs from behind her smack her ass. MMMH nice choice of panties, bouncy boobs and fur masses, yap fried chicken sure knows how to pick them haha, <laughs> now young lady your panties, Naruto stated while looking at Shui with a pervy grin, in his head, please don't let Granny Tsunade find out, or I am dead meat. Elemental nations, a certain big boob former cage, after the fourth took back the chair, felt the urge to kill a certain blonde head whisker face knucklehead, for what reason she didn't know, back to the molesting I mean fight. It was at this time that Naruto's team arrived with the enemy hot on their heels, on Issei's, good it seems the plan worked now to test something, before the final plan comes into play, okay, maybe it worked a little too well with how pissed off they were. At back here you pervert so that I can kill you, shouted an almost naked girl with a chainsaw, what the hell, chasing Issei. Senpai please help me, Issei shouted as he frantically dodged a mad chainsaw twin. Naruto looked at Issei then at the girls then said dude if you didn't use a condom can't help you there, if you took the wrong twin, then you are screwed, if you took the wrong twin and didn't use a condom, then you are on your own man. What the hell are you talking about? 
They want to kill me for my perverted technique to rip her clothes off, Issei shouted before he tripped and fell down, almost naked girl took this as her chance and went for the kill, Naruto seeing his fellow pervert, please kill me, Naruto pleaded in his head, about to bite the dust, decided to use one of his techniques, his target. The chainsaw. Steel. Naruto shouted as he stretched out his right that a bright light blinded everyone on the field. When the light faded everything was normal. The girl still had the chainsaw in her hands. But something was missing. Did his technique fail or something? He could feel that he stole something which was in his hand. He looked at Issei to see the dude almost about to pass out with a fountain of blood coming out of his nose. So Naruto unfolded his hand and what did he find? Some white panties and a bra, what the hell the target was the chainsaw not this, and where did they come from anyway? Biya cried the now naked girl as she squatted down trying to cover herself. She was now naked the underwear she wore now in Naruto's hand, said boy was grinning like a madman as he saw what was in his hands. Wah ha 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 yes this is awesome ha 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 laughed Naruto as he had a stupid grin on his face as he waved the panties in the air, think of Kazuma from Konosuba. Everyone on the battlefield bar is say looked shocked what the hell just happened, how did he take her underwear from way over there? You are the worst Naruto senpai said Kaneko in a semi-shocked voice. I don't know how to apologize for that that was Kiba as he bowed apologetically to the enemy who was in a frozen state. Now I say that's what I call a pervy technique, no woman underwear is safe from me, from this day forward, I shall be known as every woman's worst nightmare. Give me back my panties. Cried the girl. Never. Best viewing room. Yes that's how it feels shouted Sona before she realized she did. She just hung her head embarrassed. But inwardly she was happy she didn't suffer from that technique in public. Just thinking about being stripped like that made her blush. Okay where did that come from? Okay that just happened right. Yap. What the hell is wrong with Ria's Sama's pawns? Those were the various reactions in the room. But you could see some men and women wiping some blood of their noses. Whether it's from seeing the naked girl or the prospect of using such a technique we will never know. Most of the women had one thought in mind kill those pathetic pieces of trash. You are the worst Naruto senpai said Kaneko in a semi-shocked voice. I don't know how to apologize for that that was Kiba as he bowed apologetically to the enemy who was in a frozen state. Now I say that's what I call a pervy technique. No woman underwear is safe from me, from this day forward, I shall be known as every woman's worst nightmare, give me back my panties. Cried the girl, never. Best viewing room. Yes that's how it feels shouted Sona before she realized she did. She just hung her head embarrassed, but inwardly she was happy she didn't suffer from that technique in public, just thinking about being stripped like that made her blush, okay where did that come from? Okay that just happened right, yeah, what the hell is wrong with Ria's Sama's pawns? Those were the various reactions in the room, but you could see some men and women wiping some blood of their noses, whether it's from seeing the naked girl or the prospect of using such a technique we will never know. Most of the women had one thought in mind kill those pathetic pieces of trash. Now, Replica Occult Research Club. Asia and Ria's just looked at what happened and they were at a loss for words. When Naruto said that one of Razor's weaknesses was his peerage was comprised of 99% of its members being female, she didn't expect him to capitalize this way. She knew that it was almost every female's nightmare to be stripped in broad daylight, let alone in a huge event such as this. She didn't expect Naruto to go full on pervy mode and molest and strip the girls, okay she expected him to come up with a strategy to embarrass them or something. What she didn't expect was for Naruto to outright molest them, and the plan hasn't even gotten to the mid part yet, and that technique, she thought his says was perverted, but this was a whole new level of pervy. Asia did you know about that technique Ria's asked the girl. She spent more time with Naruto than anyone in the club, and to be honest with herself she was a bit jealous, especially seeing that Asia was developing feelings for Naruto. Yes it's a technique that allows the user to steal anything as long as it's not too big or closely guarded, he practiced it by stealing fruit from the fruit bowl and other small things, when he tried stealing a knife from my hands, he took my panties, she said the last part with a huge blush, as she remembered how she was stripped, or how Naruto almost went nuts from the scent of her panties. It seems that when it comes to women he only steals their undergarments, no matter how hard he tries, for males, it works just fine Asia finished her explanation as they continued to monitor the situations that were occurring. Ria's just nodded with a thoughtful look, but on the inside she was crying rivers of tears, her first rating game, and everyone now thinks she has a weird bunch, way to throw her dignity down the drain. Replica new school building. Wow what a show ladies and gentlemen we got a feast for the eyes, damn it, sorry about that, one of Razor Sama's pawns has retired due to public indecency, oh come on. Razor was pissed, no scratch that he was downright livid. He prided himself in his girls, and that they belonged to him and only him, he was the only one allowed to touch them and strip them naked, now these two buffoons just stripped one of his girls naked in front of every important guest he invited, to make it worse, that stupid pawn was molesting his girls, well time to bring out the big guns, you balloon go show them why you are known as the bomb queen, he ordered his queen to enter the fray, I razor Sama the bomb queen took off with the intention of blowing someone to bits, back to the molesting I mean fight, the members of team KFC were in a state of shock as they saw that one of the mass 
asked to be removed after she was stripped naked, their shock increased even more when they saw Naruto take the panties and took a huge whiff of the scent before he sighed in satisfaction, it sent a shiver up their spines. Ah now that's the staff, now for the rest of your panties. Naruto shouted with a crazed look. Razor's team compassed themselves before all of them bar little sister chicken decided on the way forward, because there was no superior appointed when they were deployed, and Razor wasn't communicating with them, they were left to their own devices, hence no solid strategy. So the girls decided to forget everyone else and eliminate the biggest threat on the field, Naruto. Naruto seeing all the girls look at him with dark murderous auras laughed nervously. Ah hey girls what's up he said bashfully while scratching the back of his head. The answer he got was the sound of a sword cutting through the air heading for his neck, he quickly ducked under the swing from the pissed off knight. Hey you almost took my head off, don't you know that swords are dangerous, Naruto comically shouted. He then dodged a flaming sword from the other knight, before he could retort about sword being dangerous, he was forced to dodge an earth shattering kick from the tent and wanted. This was followed by the other rook getting in front of him, then threw a few punches which Naruto dodged. He jumped back to survey the situation only to see that all of the enemy girls were after him, while his team seemed to be watching from the sidelines, what the hell. MMMH it seems they are all after Naruto Senpai came the ever monotone voice of Kaneko who was standing besides Kiba, she had reverted back to her default setting, but if you look closely one of her hands was staying as close to her skirt as possible to protect her precious. Yeah it seems so, well it's good they did we can buy more time this way replied Kiba. Guys I need a little help here. Shouted Naruto as he dodged some magic shots from the other bishop, all he got was a big fat no from Kiba and Kaneko, and his say, what was he doing anyway? Yago Naruto Senpai I believe in you, live the dream for us perverts. Issei cheered while he was holding a banner written go super pervert senpai, are you serious Issei? And it's not super perverted mega pervert Naruto shouted back while he blocked a flaming fist heading for his nuts, hey not there I need those to them on someone. Naruto then back paddled to gain ground as he surveyed the situation, well all of them were angry, and it clouded their judgment, he could take all of them out easily, but he still needed a few items from them haha, <laughs> now to put the fear of Naruto into them, okay my turn, ready or not panties here I come. Now give me them panties, and with that Naruto disappeared in a bust of speed, surprising everyone save his team, he then started to systematically fight his opponents, forcing them to huddle up in one place, with that done seeing that they were all in one place, except for the little sis KFC, who was watching in shock from the sidelines he just smirked, time to test the upgraded version of his technique, Hervey style number 2 multi-steel. Naruto held out both his hands much the girl's horror, a bright light shined before they could escape or react, and a few seconds later it was all over. All the girls that were victim to the technique felt liberated of something, especially those not wearing pants, downstairs felt breezy all of a sudden, and those with huge jugs felt them sag, that's when they realized that they were all hit by that dreadful technique at the same time. None of them dare look to confirm what just happened under their skirts or in their pants, they looked horrified at Naruto to see him holding multiple articles of clothing they could identify as theirs. I asked nicely and you refused so I had to do it the hard way. Oh man look at this exquisite clothing I am rich <laughs> Naruto shouted while throwing the underwear in a jade bubble before it disappeared. All the girls that fell victim to the technique blushed in embarrassment and anger as tried to recover their dignity. They bust back our underwear you pervert. Shouted Shui, Tent and Wanab, as she used speeds that she didn't know she could use, she forgot about everything as the only thing that mattered was beating the shit out of this pervert. She jumped into the air delivered a spinning axe kick to Naruto who seemed to freeze for a moment, the kick got Naruto in the shoulder, driving his feet into the ground, as the ground cracked from the power of the kick, Shui smirked, but that smirk turned into a frown, as she saw Naruto was still standing buried knee deep into the ground, wow look at that such a nice heavenly shaved view, it smells so fresh and untainted by bird brain over there, I am glad because because it smells so nice so enticing, Naruto stated as he focused intently on a certain spot, when you are given a free show any hit you take is worth it, the girl realized her mistake too late, she wasn't wearing any panties, and she just gave him a free show, he had seen her with panties and now without, and how did he know that her master hasn't slept with her, and why was she blushing at him complimenting her unsullied state, she was grounded that's for sure, if she was to fight this meant no kicks whatsoever, on the sidelines Kiba just didn't know what to say, stealing a pair of underwear was one thing, but stealing underwear from nine girls at the same time was just insane, and why was he keeping the underwear for? It making him look even weirder. The Neko shouldn't told her poker face anymore, both hands were tightly clutched to her skirt, as she was afraid she would suffer the same fate as the other girls. Issei was both crying and cheering at the same time, crying because his senpai's pervy technique was better than his. He prided himself for developing the dress break technique which to him was the ultimate pervy technique, to see the multi-steel in action, made him realize that yes he was perverted, but Naruto outclassed him by far, at least there was something to celebrate about. For the first time pervy techniques were used in a real fight and they were effective and a deciding factor in this fight. Yes go Naruto senpai make all the perverts in the multiverse dead or alive, feel proud to have been represented. 
Issei shouted before he dodged a fireball from Sister KFC. It was at this time that all perverts across the multiverse dead or alive felt the urge to cheer for something historic that has happened. Ravel on the other hand was at a loss for words. Her team was disabled by that pervy technique which limited their fighting power. It's a girl thing I think, to make it worse, she was the only one left, which means she was the next target. As if reading her mind Naruto turned towards her with a scary weird face. Think of Satama's scary stupid face. The one he gave to the ground dragon in season 1, that look sent the shivers down her spine. This one good for her. Suddenly a flash of lightning was seen across the sky followed by an explosion. Looking up everyone saw Akeno in her lightning priestess regalia facing the enemy queen. It seems the plan worked to draw out the enemy queen without the boss. Yubaluna wanted to take out all of the enemy in one attack, but their queen intercepted, it was like she was waiting for her. Oh no, they planned this all along to get them all in one place. Best viewing room. Everyone was officially creeped out by Naruto except for a select few. If you put aside his perverted side he is a good fighter. I can go so far as to say that he is just toying with them, Sarah Erb commented as he analyzed Naruto. He could see how easy Naruto evaded all those attacks, and how he fought to get the enemy in one place, and he wasn't even winded not in the slightest, he was strong, but he didn't want to show it. Those who heard Sarah Erg's comments and analyzed the fight were in agreement with him, it seems there is more to his perverseness than he lets on, some could only see the perverted side of him. She is making us look bad even if she is winning, their tactics are not fit for high class devils like us, Sikvera stated as she looked on with a blank face, she wanted to see Uriya's prove herself that she was worthy of the title bestowed upon her but with the way things are that all went down the drain. Suit yourself a win is a win, would you rather face the pervert and prove your point, or will you end up like the other girls? Sarah Ergs defended his cousin, while Sikvera shivered at the thought of falling victim to that technique. Oh man I feel sorry for those girls. Yeah being stripped like that with an audience like this it's embarrassing. Rhea's parents could only feel embarrassment from the display of their daughter's pawn, while the KFC I mean the Phoenix family could only feel rage, especially now that their daughter was the target. But the Mao. Yeah go Nerutan strip those birds naked Sarah off cheered on, she wasn't disturbed by what happened to the females, honestly, it was a nice change of pace from those bloodbaths they see most of the time, it was about damn time someone put a new spine to things, so ya yeah, where there is comedy Sarah Tan is there to cheer on, Rafia just looked with her usual stoic face, but if you look closely you could see a ghost of a smile, it seems the ice queen was enjoying herself too, however someone was having a bad day. The haha look at that Serzich's, your sister's peerage is a unique one that's for sure, did you help pick those two or what? Did you teach them to do that? Ahahaha Kuja laughed his guts out with tears in his eyes, while Serzich's hung his head in embarrassment, Ria's is the sister of Amau, and her peerage is weird to say the least, this would reflect badly on him and the family, and this also gave Akuja more ammo to use on him. Wake up you idiot. No please don't wake him up, he doesn't want to see this. Thanks for the save Aki-chan Naruto shouted while he looked at Akeno. You are welcome Naruto-kun, now let me deal with this pest while you wrap things up. Eh hey, you got it Aki-chan, now let's get on with the molesting I mean fighting haha <laughs> slip of the tongue, or not it sent shivers down every girl present spine. Akeno went on to fight the bomb queen who was gritting her teeth when she realized that all this was a trick to draw them in one place, while well, both kings were in their bases, or maybe the enemy king decided to attack Razor, while well, they were all occupied in this battle, she has to wrap things up here and fast, but she knew it's easier said than done, since Akeno was known to be strong too. As for Naruto he again turned his sights to his victim, Ravel, who was now in the sky with her flaming wings, the girl seemed to have gained some confidence after their queen arrived, well time to scare the crap out of her. Before he could do anything he noticed three powerful signatures heading for them in fact, they were all queen level in power to which he assumed were the pawn they let get promoted. Heads up guys the pawns just got a promotion and they are coming for you, we are also heading out, came the voice of Rias from their comms, Rias then took Asia, and they snuck past the enemies who were preoccupied with the battle and headed for Razor, they were just going to distract the chicken until the rest of his team have been taken out. Ok time to accelerate their plans. Naruto took a whiff of air as he had smelt an aroma that only hung around girls from his club, the scent of a pure virgin, not those that remove their own virginity, mind you, this was pure unbroken virgin. He had resisted with the girls from his club, although staying with Asia was making things difficult, this scent was driving him crazy. He looked at Ravel with a grin and pointed at her Hashirama style. You have the scent of a pure virgin, a rare specimen indeed and quite a delicacy, so give me those virgin panties. Shouted Naruto and he brought out his wings out and speed towards the shocked girl. Be you get away from me, Ravel fired fireballs at Naruto who dodged them all. Her eye widened as he got closer before she took a flying in circles around the field while trying to keep Naruto as far away as possible. Come back with those panties, I want them now. No get away from me pervert Ravel shouted as she shot a huge fireball which collided with Naruto. She sighed in relief but saw a figure busting through the flames unharmed. Urgent panties. 
On the sidelines. Poor girl she will be traumatized for life, commented Kiba while folding his hands. I almost feel sorry for her, almost came the monotone voice of Kaneko. You know Kaneko if Naruto Senpai is reacting like that now to that girl. I wonder what he will do to you when he lost his self-control commented the same making Kaneko shiver at what that pervert would do to her or the other girls. Back with the molesting, yes I said it this isn't a fight it's pure molesting. Ravel was flying as fast as she could while calling for her brother, she saw the top of their base explode and saw her brother fighting Rias who was being supported by the ex-nun. Rias seemed to be on the defensive by making multiple barriers to protect her and Asia from KFC's attacks. That moment of distraction cost her dearly, from behind her she heard Naruto whispered into her ear, the word she did didn't want to her, although it sent a pleasurable shiver down her spine from his breath that tickled her ear. Steel and with that it was all over, the virgin panties have finally been liberated from their captor. The girl just sank into the ground while crying and I'm tears, she was embarrassed to say the least. Her, a high class devil, got her panties stolen with all those people watching, and worse, they were her naughty panties too. Best viewing room, everyone slowly backed away from the pissed off phoenix family who wanted to kill a certain someone. You could see the ground and some furniture catching fire or melting, not to mention the Kai they were emitting, it was worse than anything they ever felt before, and that saying something. Oh man they are pissed. Back to the molesting. Razor looked on in horror at what happened to his precious little sister. He wanted to kill that boy. But Riaz keeps getting in his way. He then smirks when he spots some figures coming to the field. Seems the game is about to change, and that pervert is going to suffer for what he did to his property and his dear sister. Dude has a thing for his sister. Naruto beheld the black lace treasure he had just wrestled a dragon to save. Oh the scent was so intoxicating. It was so heavenly. Now that's some naughty panties you got there missy, and they smell so nice, oh crap Akeno. Naruto shouted, he was so engrossed with the virgin panties that he failed to notice the attacks until it was too late. Akeno was fighting the enemy queen when three blasts appeared out of nowhere from behind her, the voice from Naruto warned her too late, as the blasts were already very close, suddenly giant tentacles sprouted out of the ground and wrapped themselves around Akeno, before dragging her back to the ground, making the blasts miss her. Almost everyone was surprised by what happened, what the hell was that and where did it come from, the tentacles gently placed Akeno down, just as the promoted pawns rendezvoused with their teeth team, Kaneko and Kiba just looked at Naruto with blank faces. How the hell did he get that thing in here? Kiba asked as he knew what that thing is capable doing especially in situations such as this. Yes good save tentacles kun, Akeno's boobs are safe, shouted a say to the monster which growled happily at being complimented, it further turned red when Akeno patted it while thanking it. What is that thing doing here? Kaneko asked as she shivered with flashbacks of what that thing did to her during training. Oh it's my familiar, Naruto senpai registered it for me and snuck it in here a say answered with a proud look. Best viewing room, what the hell was that? was the general question shouted by almost everyone. It's a familiar registered under Ria's pawn is say. It's legal reply to Kuja as he looked at the paperwork regarding familiars. How the hell did they hide such a thing and no one noticed? Man did you see the speeds that pawn moved at, it's insane dude, and he is a newly reincarnated devil at that. Back to the molesting. Nice work tentacles kun, and will you look at that more victims for me to play with, Naruto said as he disappeared again, before the other victims had the chance to warn their fellow teammates. Steel. Too late, Naruto reappeared with their undergarments in his hands, he then started to parade them like a maniac, before he placed them in the jade bubble, where he placed the others before. The victims were in a state of shock at what happened, and what's worse was that they were all in one place. Big mistake. Rhea seemed to be keeping the chicken at bay, but she was losing ground, better take these guys out in fast before the real fight starts. Tentacle Kun, now. Naruto shouted. More tentacles erupted from the ground capturing all the girls dragging them closer together and restraining them. The girls were caught off guard, so they cold debate the attack, with them in one place. Naruto decided it was time to unveil his sacred gear to the world. He held out his right hand, and a familiar gauntlet appeared. It looked like Issei's sacred gear when it underwent its second transformation, only that it was jade in color with a red gem stone. The others were surprised by this, he had told them that he had a sacred gear, but was having difficulty awakening it. He didn't explain what its ability were just that it caused him to be a massive I mean a mega pervert, but now they were going to see it in action. Even the viewers were surprised by the reveal of a sacred gear that looked a lot like the Red Dragon Emperor sacred gear, except for the color. Alright Zirkinus let's do this Naruto shouted. You got it partner. Naruto then took a stance, Dragon Slayer stance, and focused his energy into his chest. A jade-like aura surrounded him going about 10 inches from his body. As he sucked in air and puffed his cheeks, he then let loose his attack on those poor souls. Now take this, ultimate pervy technique. Pervert Dragon's Roar. 
and b it should be jade dragon's roar a huge beam of jade energy shot out of his mouth and towards the poor helpless girls try as they might tentacles Kun was holding on to them tightly so they won't escape the energy beam struck its target and passed through them when everything settled the girls didn't look harmed not in the slightest with the power that the beam carried everyone thought that it should have caused a lot of damage everyone just blinked as they looked at naruto then to the girls was that beam a dud or something what the hell naruto senpai i thought it would have destroyed them like my dragon shot as say shouted comically at naruto ah naruto senpai pace attack failed, came the monotone voice of Kaneko which was laced with a hint of amusement, wait for it 3, 2, 1 and voila. Yeah came the collective screams from all the girls. Now this is what I call a pervert's paradise haha. <laughs> when everything settled the girls didn't look harmed not in the slightest, with the power that the beam carried everyone thought that it should have caused a lot of damage, everyone just blinked as they looked at Naruto then to the girls, was that beam a dud or something? What the hell Naruto senpai, I thought it would have destroyed them like my dragon shot as say shouted comically at Naruto. Ah Naruto senpai's attack failed came the monotone voice of Kaneko, which was laced with a hint of amusement. Wait for it 3, 2, 1 and voila. The yaa came the collective screams from all the girls. Now this is what I call a pervert's paradise haha. <laughs> now, everyone was silent except for the girls that were lamenting what happened. Team Rias mouths hung open as they tried to process what had happened. Issei was already passed out and almost got disqualified due to massive blood lose because of what was the biggest nose bleed ever. The chicken for the first time in his life was at a loss for words. He never expected this level of perverseness to happen let alone to his peerage, that perverted dragon emperor was one this, but this is just too much. And Naruto what was he doing? Flash flash flash. Oh yeah, he was busy taking pictures with a wicked grin on his face. Best viewing room. The guests were all silent, what the hell just happened here? Wow ladies and gentlemen I don't believe what I am seeing, but all I can say is this is a feast for the eyes, a bonanza haha, <laughs> shit shut the hell up you stupid mouth, came the voice of the announcer, as he clearly wasn't doing his job, and was that a perverted giggle, this clearly woke everyone up, okay let me be the one to say this, best rating game ever commented a male guest with blood flowing out of his nose, well now looking at the room it seems 99, 9%, okay, 100% of all males were experiencing nose bleeds for some reason, most of the women were red with anger and brows violently twitching, the minority were either having a nosebleed or clearing having fun, oh man I can wait for the next trading game this team is in, and I hope a team they are up against will have more females in it, came another enthusiastic comment from another guest, the Phoenix and the Gremory families were having a bad day, one had their son's peerage thoroughly humiliated, and the other was clearly embarrassed by what their daughter's pawn was doing. Right now we find a fuming lady phoenix with a flaming fist standing over her husband who was on the floor almost unconscious with a bleeding nose. Pervert was the only word she shouted, but the Gremory, honey I think we need to talk to our daughter about how to properly represent the clan lady Gremory spoke to her husband, while her eyes were glued on the screen, all she received was silence, um honey did you hear me she turned, and what did she find, her husband had a pervy grin on his face and a nose bleed, his mind clearly somewhere in fantasy land, like all women who see their husband she clobbered him into the ground, all or Gremory uttered was, this is better than those porno magazines those humans read before he passed out from the blow or nose bleed we never know, but the rest of the rookie four. Oh my mayu, what the hell is this? This isn't a fight it's pure molesting of the highest level, there is no way I will fight her peerage unless they get rid of him. Shouted a horrified Sekvera, what she was seeing she definitely did not want to suffer, Sona just nodded in agreement trying to fight off a blush coming to her face, the rest of Sona's peerage was red, faced with embarrassment from what they saw, only Saji was out cold with a nosebleed equaling that of Issei, well you gotta hand it to those guys it was a brilliant and devious plan if I say so myself, pissing off the enemy, getting them in one place, making them focus on one person, while the others conserve energy and taking them out in one swoop, while making sure the king doesn't interfere, it was a brilliant plan even and I could have fallen for that commented Sarayerg, while well, taking a few sniffs his eyes glued to the screen. Sarayerg what is that running from your nose asked his queen in an all too sweet voice that promised pain and more pain if the answer is unsatisfactory. The man in question started to sweat as he looked away and quickly wiped his nose, but all it did was smear the liquid across his face and hand. Oh it's nothing no need to worry about it he replied his voice lacking the confidence he was had when he came in, his reply just increased the aura of doom behind his queen. Then what's that on you hand and nose? That tomato sauce has Sarah Sarayerg replied as he laughed nervously, then he screamed as he got the crap beaten out of him. In the history of rating games this was the only one where guests ever needed to be attended by healers, either from being beaten or from nosebleeds. The patients were treated in the room because conscious or not, they all refused to leave the room. But the Mayu. Sniff Serzich's sniff what the hell were you teaching that kid sniff sniff talk to Kuja, as he also wiped blood from his nose, he might be one of the most powerful and calm and a scientist, but the scene before him was enough to make even him experience his fist nosebleed. Why are you asking me for sniff. I have sniff no idea how he did that or who taught him that sniff. 
Good thing my wife isn't here otherwise I would be dead ouch replied Serzich's before he got punched into the ground by his queen. When your wife is not around I am in charge of disciplining you replied and amused Grafia as she turned to watch the match. Oh why did they not have this guy on the battlefield during the war? It would have made war fun. Iago Neritan strip them all naked. Shouted the ever cheerful Seraphal. Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z How is that even possible and is he having a nosebleed in his sleep? Back to the molesting. So what caused all this chaos on the field and to the guests? Well the answer came from Seraphal actually, the beam did not hurt the girls in any way, it just melted all of their clothes and armor for those wearing it, what's worse was that Naruto had stolen their undergarments, and now everyone can see their unmentionables haha. <laughs> Even worse still tentacles Kun was getting all excited his tentacles snuggling in all the right, wrong, places, simulating a tentacle monster bondage fetish scene, it was very erotic actually hence the nose bleed chaos. Riaz was the first to recover from the shock, she thought that they would take them out with a destructive attack not this, stripping all these girls of their underwear, then their clothes was just too much, and it wasn't doing anything for their reputation, and tentacles Kun was making it even worse. What the hell kind of attack was that? She shouted at Naruto who ignored her in favor of taking pictures. Uzumaki senpai mega pervert came the even more monotone voice from Kaneko. My dress break is no match for his techniques, said the miraculously recovered Issei as he sat down drawing something with huge dark rain clouds hovering above him. Sniff this is too much senpai sniff came the shy voice of Kiba, prompting his teammates to quickly look at him. The poor boy was looking away, but he was stealing a few glances here and there, his face was all red, whether from embarrassment or something else. The most surprising thing that caught his teammates' attention was the a few drops of blood licking from his nose. Naruto seeing this developed a huge grin on his face as he suddenly teleported in front of Kiba. He was now wearing Emperor Palpatine's outfit and was imitating him by creepily rubbing his hands together with a creepy dark laugh. Issei had also joined in with his own Palpatine worshipper regalia. Yes Kiba just one more push and you will join us in the pervert side. Together we shall be known as the new fearsome pervert trio. We shall spread chaos and terror among the female popple. POW Naruto could finish his speech as he and Issei found their faces meeting the ground courtesy of Kaneko. Ouch so close more Issei his face still in the ground. Ya yeah, man we almost hit him replied Naruto before he was interrupted by his new partner. Ah partner wats with the name you gave to my technique. I specifically remember it being called the Jade Dragon's Roar, not whatever it is you called it. Ranted his partner Zirkinus, honestly this was his debut, and he wanted to make a good first impression. Drag was here, so he had to show off a little, but that buffoon had to ruin it. You know you are a dragon right gets a yes, and you are a pervert right gets an absolutely hence the name perverted dragon's roar, and this shut Zirkinus up whether he wanted to argue or not. But don't worry I have a feeling your friend is going to get a name for himself too, Naruto said referring to Drag. It was only a matter of time before Issei's pervy tendencies get Drag a nickname which will humiliate him. His musings were interrupted when the announcer announced that all of Razor's pawns, bishops and knights, have just retired. Oh uh -huh, how he loved it when a good plan comes together. Razor very much pissed off, his peerage were eliminated in one go, and without sustaining any dangerous injury, they asked to be eliminated, and the announcer had the gall to comment that they were eliminated for their naked exhibitionist tendencies. That announcer just officially made number two on his list of people to kill that perverted pawn being number one. But then he smirked when he noticed that he still had a team member left. Um grrrr. Tentacles Khan shrieked in pain when he was blasted by the Bomb Queen, forcing him to let her go, she then quickly withdrew from danger as she tried to cover herself. No way, she actually stayed to fight Sniff Naruto shouted in shock, while wiping off the blood running from his nose, he thought that all of them would give up after being stripped naked in front of everyone, that's a mistake on his part, not counting there being that type of girl, and the chicken was wearing an arrogant smile to boot. You see fool this is what I call loyalty, no matter what, loyal pieces always come to the aid of their master, regardless of the condition they are in. I am going to have to discipline the others when we get back said the chicken. Now those words shocked everyone, even the retired pieces who were given clothes and decided to watch from the med bay away from the rest of the guests. I am Razor Sama's queen I fight for him, even if I am not dressed the queen added to her master's words, okay something is seriously wrong with that girl. Wow well, now that's a queen, say Aki chan if your clothes happened to Naruto didn't finish Akeno swiftly cut him off with a big fat no. He tried Ria's and got the same response, Kaneko just raised her fists, giving him the answer he needed, and he didn't ask Asia, the girl was just too sweet to ask that. Okay then if nudity doesn't
doesn't deter you then I will just have to convince you through some other means, Naruto said darkly as a dark aura surrounded him. He looked at the queen with an unreadable expression as she prepared to fight. He was a pawn, and she was a queen, and without any clothing for him to perform his perverted techniques, and he has nothing that can scare her. Razor just instructed his queen to make it as painful as possible, while Naruto instructed his team not to interfere. The two faced off with Naruto covering his hands with a strange liquid electric substance that their girls from his peerage recognized. They felt a shiver run down their spines at the thought of that technique being used on them. They felt sorry for the poor girl if that technique ever reached her. Okay foolish girl I am going to do something that your master failed to do. This technique is a technique only exclusive to me, and even if it could be taught no matter how much money you offer me, I will never teach it to anyone ever. Naruto proclaimed as he dodged some spells that exploded where he used to occupy. He took off into the air maneuvering between the spells the bomb queen was throwing at her. Seemed she was pretty determined to blow him to smithereens. And she was pretty confident she could do that because she was a queen and he was a pawn. Okay time to change her mind and show her that in a world where he comes from rank means jack. So he increased his speed mid-flight and disappeared from her view. The girl tried to locate him and when she did it was too late. He was right behind her. Razor's eyes widened at how a simple pawn could move fast enough to outmaneuver a queen, said girl froze when she felt a presence behind her, she thought she had the advantage, but he was much faster than her. Touch of the arrow god, Yubaluna braced herself for an attack, but was confused when she felt his hand graze her back, and then it happened. She didn't know what happened, but whatever it was it felt so good, her brain turned to mush in an instant, her legs felt like jelly. Her body temperature shot up, and her breath became labored, all in all she was feeling great well, until she felt the dampness between her legs that's when they realized what happened. Razor again was at a loss for word, and so were the guests, what the hell just happened? His queen just coomed in front of everyone with a simple touch, what the hell kind of technique is that? Naruto then took the opportunity to get behind the girl and started playing with her fun bags, all the while the girl was moaning like there was no tomorrow. Team Riaz was just gawking at the scene, Asia tried to cover her eyes, but the huge gap between her fingers and the blush said otherwise. The other girls were spotting serious blushes on their facing while resisting the urge to rub their legs together, Issei and surprisingly Kiba were running rivers of blood from their noses. In the guest room there was chaos as most of the guests, males, hit critical and needed immediate hospitalization, but they still refused to leave. Naruto gentle landed with the girl while he was still playing with her boobs, he looked at Razor with a smug look. You see Razor I did something that your chicken worm failed to do with just my hands no less commented Naruto while supporting the girl who was now limb in his hand because of brain overload. Maybe he went too far on this one, meh, as long as they get rid of her. He made a move to put the girl down, but she then held him in an iron grip. More whispered the girl with lust-filled eyes. I could repeat that I didn't quite hear you. Asked Naruto as he cleared his ears, he heard her, but he just wanted to make sure that he wasn't hearing things. I want more give me more. Shouted the girl as she drew closer to Naruto with renewed strength. This shocked everyone on the field more so Naruto. Haha <laughs> what? Shouted the surprised Naruto as he tried to get away from the girl. Bad move because the girl developed a look that reminded him of a predator that enjoys chasing its prey. Oh how could he forget that this technique could backfire on him. Kaneko went nuts with just the washed down version of this technique, this one is going bonkers. Naruto then took off with the girl hot on his heels, the girl was shouting something about getting a hold of him, so they could begin the experiments and other crazy stuff, it was a weird scene to behold, I mean a young man with raging hormones running away from a naked chick who wants to give him some, yeah truly a weird sight to behold. The scene ended with Yubaluna being drop kicked by an annoyed and blushing Kaneko, then the other girls came in and stomped her big time to make sure she doesn't magically revive again, or was it that she was having having something they wanted, but cold voice at best viewing room, the room was in a state of chaos again. And it was worse than the first time too, why you ask? I don't care how much you have to pay just learn that technique. Were the words many wives were shouting while manhandling their husbands who were on the brink of actually dying of blood loss, oh did I mention that the wives also had nosebleeds from the erotic scene that just played out. Every woman wanted their spouses to possess that technique. Every girl was either changing their underwear or wiping their noses while making plans to get a hold of that technique or somehow kidnap the owner of that technique and lock him up in a basement somewhere. The ice queen Grafia wasn't doing much better, her cheeks were flushed and she seemed to be fidgeting for obvious reasons, our favorite magical garment girl, was also contemplating on changing her garments, since they were not so magical anymore, Lord Phoenix and Lord Grimory were also in the same predicament with their wives, as they politely asked them to acquire that technique, yep way better than those poor magazines mumbled Lord Grimory and Lala Land, best rating game ever. Ya yeah, total chaos and our favorite blonde didn't even know that he would soon be worshipped as the hero god. Back to the field, Naruto seeing his part done went back to his team, well that over so high five he said to the girl who with light speeds moved away from him, get away from us. Don't touch us. 
were the responses from the girls. So Naruto tried his bros, they won't leave him hanging, will they? Forget it. Keep your hands to yourself. Poor Naruto was left hanging, and he had no idea why, because no one wants to do what they saw the chicken's queen did. The announcer then announced that Razor's queen had just retired leaving Razor all alone against Rhea's entire peerage. Rhea's forgetting all the weird stuff that just happened cold believed that the plan actually worked, she never expected all of them to survive this far in good shape, the plan was crazy, but crazy was what they needed, and they pulled through. Only one huddle left and they are home free, but this huddle is a big one, Razor. Razor was gritting his teeth as he saw his queen eliminated, and and in the most humiliating way possible. Never had he expected this to happen. This was supposed to be walk in the park, not this massacre that just happened. He looked at Rhea's and saw the girl was now even more confident than before. It was like this was all planned, and he fell for it. You might be wondering why your counter plan didn't work when you had me all figured out. To answer you it's quite simple. I didn't come up with the plan he did she said as she pointed to Naruto, who was wearing his trademark foxy grin, now that got Razor's attention, he thought he was going against Rhea's, but in reality he was going up against a pawn, and his plan was crushed too, this is humiliating to a high class devil like him, and the wise words on me in another place you just got fox dude, never mess with the fox, anyway I see that you are ready for our final showdown, so as is the culture in the human world, when the final battle is about to be fought, we exchange last words in case one of you dies, I was hoping you could read mine out loud, Naruto said while he put his hand into his left pocket looking for something. The other members of his team just looked at him like he had grown a second head, there was no custom like that in the human world, so what was he planning? Razor won't be that stupid to fall for that. They saw Naruto fishing out a card from his pocket, then he flew to Razor before he handed it to him that quickly flew back. Razor looked at the card suspiciously, then looked at the words or rather word written on it, before he read it aloud, not thinking anything of it, he thought it was in a weird human tongue, and he was confused as to what it meant. He is bird brained after all. Aka da dodo. He read. It started slow, but after a while it became full blow laughter, oh man who know tricking people could be so much fun, even the stoic Kaneko was laughing, and that was saying something, is say not being the most subtle of the bunch. Ahahaha the rooster just crowed hahaha that just proved that he is a chicken the boy laughed like there was no tomorrow, honestly the dude just did them a favor and proved himself a chicken to the rest of the demon world, he just embarrassed himself and his entire family. In the guest viewing room things weren't easy for the phoenix family after everyone recovered from blood loss, everyone heard their son crow like a chicken, everyone from the most prominent families. The guests were trying to be as polite as possible by hiding their laughter, but it came out as a bunch of snickers, Seraphol not so much, she was laughing her guts out while imitating a rooster, they were now starting to regret ever inviting guests, they should have left it as a private function. Razor was pissed, he was red-faced, shaking in rage, you could see smoke coming out of his ears, he let loose a bust of his power which ignited into hot flames, breaking everyone from their laughing fit. Okay everyone take your positions Naruto instructed, he and Kaneko took the front, while Kiba and Issei made the second line of defense, Rias and Akeno stood back with Asia behind them, so that they could protect their healer, who knew that bad guys can give you some ideas. Thank you pain for the idea even though ended up in a lot of pain. So what's the plan? Rias asked, she knew that the real battle was about to start, and they still haven't figured out how to take the chicken down. It's simple really, we knock him out, Kiba will be a bit useless for this one, but his eye sword will be useful. All we need is to cause blunt force trauma to the guy to knock him out, which means for those going in hand-to-hand -hand target the face, back of the head, neck, ribs and solar plexus, this will deliver massive amounts of pain which will hopefully knock him out. The others will run support while damaging him forcing him to use more power to heal himself until he runs out, so Niko-chan you take point on this one, Naruto explained. Best viewing room. The guests knew that the real fight was about to begin, the formation Rhea's team took signified that they already had a plan for this, all the shenanigans in the room stopped as everyone and waited with bated breaths for the fight to begin, you could feel the tension in the air, and anticipation was dancing in the viewers' eyes. The time for fun and games was over now it's time for fists to do the talking. The climax of the battle was about to begin, two TEAMS face off, or we could say one individual representing his humiliated team versus seven people from Team Rias, who will win. So what's the plan? Rias asked, she knew that the real battle was about to start, and they still haven't figured out how to take the chicken down. It's simple really, we knock him out, Kiba will be a bit useless for this one, but his ice sword will be useful, all we need is to cause blunt force trauma to the guy to knock him out, which means for those going in hand to hand target the face, back of the head, neck, ribs and solar plexus, this will deliver massive amounts of pain which will hopefully knock him out. The others will run support while damaging him forcing him to use more power to heal himself until he runs out, so Niko chan you take point on this this one, Naruto explained. Best viewing room. The guests knew that the real fight was about to begin, the formation Rhea's team took signified that they already had a plan for this, all the shenanigans
shenanigans in the room stopped as everyone waited with bated breaths for the fight to begin, you could feel the tension in the air, and anticipation was dancing in the viewers' eyes. The time for fun and games was over now it's time for fists to do the talking. The climax of the battle was about to begin, two TEAMS face off, or we could say one individual representing his humiliated team versus seven people from Team Ria's, who will win. Now, somewhere unknown, our mysterious figure, appeared in Chapter 4, was watching the rating game with a great deal of interest, the figure as well as the other deities that sent Naruto to this new world, were all watching with great interest, they were all surprised by how Naruto handled himself against all odds, they were surprised by the effects the sacred gear had on Naruto, who could have predicted that the boy would become a pervert of the highest order. Although the female deities didn't complain much after seeing touch of the arrow god technique in action, the males were however annoyed and jealous at the same time, they were supreme beings for goodness sake, and even they cold and come up with a technique like this, what's worse this human seems to have garnered that attention of a number of goddesses, even those who didn't have an interest in the opposite sex, but what they all agreed was that so far Naruto was proving himself to be quite the hero, even though the game wasn't over, our mysterious figure knew that what Naruto did got him on the radar of a few powerful beings, what the figure saw also made it want to get its hands on Naruto even more, it just hoped that its pawn would either kill Naruto or make him fail, if this plan fails, then it would have to pay Naruto a visit, they have quite a few things to discuss, for now time for a change of undergarments that raiding game was really intense haha, <laughs> back to the raiding game, things were tense in the arena as team Riaz was about to face the only member of team KFC left, said member was pissed off with his power leaking out of him, if it wasn't for his freakish regenerative abilities, they would have had no problems at all, but that bloodline makes fighting him a pain in the neck. As for Naruto he wasn't worried about himself but about his team, from the little time they trained together, to be more accurate the little time he trained them, they had improved a bit, but not to the standard he wanted them to be, if they had more time things would have been different, that's why he had to focus on those individual abilities that would be incorporated into his plan, but the exception of him, Issei and Asia, the others had good teamwork which he was so glad, even when Issei, Asia and him were added the team's dynamics was still good, way better than the disaster that was team 7, man that was one of the worst teams in shinobi history, the only reason they survived was because of his training with the nine tails and sheer dumb luck, otherwise they would have been dead on their first real mission, Kakashi was really a fool to not train them at all, well he wasn't going to make that mistake, we learned from experience and Naruto's horrible experience with his former team told him that as soon as this was over he was going to put everyone through hell, he wasn't about to lose these guys they have grown on him, at least miracles happen right, he was about to employ the only skill Baka Kakashi ever taught him, even though he was bad at teaching said skill, teamwork, Naruto took into account everyone's individual skill set, and from that during the training period, he aimed to improve those skills, he knew that there were other abilities his team had, but they were either ashamed or afraid to use them, he would work on that later, but for now time to pound this chicken into minced meat, alright Niko-chan we are up Naruto said getting a nod from Kaneko, as well as a small blush, although he didn't see it, but that the two speed at Razor with incredible speeds which surprised the chicken, they were upon him in a few seconds with Naruto taking the lead, he delivered a kick to Razor's face who blocked it, said kick was meant to block Razor's vision long enough for Kaneko to land a devastating punch to the chicken's gut launching him into the ground creating a crater, Razor looked up to see the two devils floating in the air with him on the ground, he didn't see what happened all he knew was after he blocked the kick, he felt a force which knocked the wind out of him and his gut, and the next thing is his body was regenerating, while found himself in a cozy crater, okay, so maybe they are a little good, but he can take them on, he got up and prepared to blast off towards his victims, before he could even get off the ground his wings were blasted by a steam of lightning and crimson energy, this disoriented him a bit, but it was enough to earn him an axe kick from Kaneko destroying his head while driving his body into the ground, before his head could fully reform he received another punch to the midsection by Naruto, knocking the wind out of him, Naruto then started raining blows to the midsection, inflicting a lot of pain, Razor then let loose a bust of flames that prompted Kaneko and Naruto to fly back, he got back up while panting a bit, he might regenerate at amazing speeds, but he could still feel pain, okay time to retaliate, he shot straight at Naruto and threw a punch at him, he was surprised to see the pawn sidestepping his punch, before he was kicked to the side of the head, launching him straight into the waiting arms, or punch to be exact, of Kaneko, said girl delivered a wicked right hook to the poor bastard, launching back to Naruto how stopped him with an elbow blow to his back, Naruto quickly delivered a suplex to the chicken, mid suplex Kaneko rushed in and jumped up, then stomped Razor's head further driving him into the ground, both teammates backed up to survey the damage they caused, they could see Razor's head flaming, meaning he was regenerating the damage they caused, they could tell his energy was decreasing from having to regenerate himself, but it was not fast enough, plus they wanted to give the guy a concussion, how hard is it to give this guy a concussion? 
The answer, very hard, after they see the dude standing looking good as new. Best viewing room. Almost every guest's mouth hung open as they watched the match. The show of skill and teamwork from Rhea's team was amazing. The speed and strength displayed by the Rook and Pawn was very impressive, and coupled with the show of fighting skill, left the audience blown away. What are they doing? Don't they know that they are fighting a member of the Phoenix clan? Those kinds of attacks don't work on him commented Sekvera. Although she was impressed by the display of skill she doubted that they would win with what they were doing. Sona on the other hand was analyzing the match intently. She also had the same thoughts as Sekvera. What Rias was doing won't work. What they needed was either someone who could use holy magic or items or a powerful sacred gear. They have it, but the user is not well trained to properly use it. The only option left was to use massive amount of power to deal a lot of damage, forcing the guy to run out of energy while regenerating. Generating. Her team could win if they utilize Saja's sacred gear. Rias was in a tough spot. She only wished her friend would pull through. Both that's clever. I see my cousin has a good strategy in mind, commented a grinning Sererg, as he had figured out what Rias was planning. The others looked at his with questioning looks, prompting him to sigh. Even though his fellow kings were powerful, they were not experienced fighters to notice what he noticed, and the pawn basically gave away the clue to defeating Razor. They are going to knock him out. His healing abilities can heal damage dealt to the body but it cannot heal blunt force trauma, they are targeting areas that cause a great deal of pain, while also dealing damage to the body, forcing him to heal himself, everyone has a limit to the amount of pain they can take, it's only a matter of time before he succumbs to the pain he explained as he saw his fellow king's dawn looks of realization, who knew his cousin was this devious, back to the fight, Razor brushed himself having healed from the damage that had been done to him, he shock of his initial shock that lead him to be pulverized as he analyzed the situation he has in, it seems the enemy has chosen to go for close quarter combat, well time to switch strategies then and go for long range. Razor fired a torrent of fire straight at Naruto and Kaneko. The two quickly backed away close to their teammates. Before a double-layered barrier was erected in front of them, they could see their king and queen raising their hands to sustain the barrier. Naruto nodded to the rest before Hiran left while Kaneko took the right, Kiba, and Isaya ran straight at the barrier as the fire died down. Razor saw Naruto and Kaneko coming at him from different directions. He made the mistake of focusing on them before he received a gauntlet-covered hand from Isaya. This moment Terrily stunned him long enough for Kiba to stab him with his ice sword which froze his lower half, Naruto and Kaneko the got into action and started beating the shit out of Razor before his lower half could heal. Razor seeing the dire situation he was in released a massive wall of flames around him, the others got out safe, but Issei was a little slow and got some burns, he retreated back to Rhea's group or Asia, casted her divine healing zone, which projected a one and a half meter radius of healing aura, this was so that the team could be healed without having to stand in front of her while she healed them. Naruto, Kiba and Kaneko Echo kept up the pressure making sure that Razor didn't have time to make a solid plan or recover long enough to cast powerful spells. Rias and Akeno kept supporting them with barriers and long-range attacks. Issei watched everyone doing their part and felt useless. He was the only one who was not doing any damage to the prick, even if he wanted to get his pound of flesh. Sensing his distress Naruto decided to help him. Yo Issei get your head out of the cloud will you we need you, you feel powerless I know the feeling but you need to think about what you want to protect, what makes you want to become more powerful than what you are now. Find that and you will find a power you can't never imagine. Issei began to think about what he wanted to protect, what made him want to fight to the best of his ability, and then some. His dream of being harem king filled with girls with all kinds of boobs, and so began the mantra in his mind to which his sacred gear responded to. Boobs 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 screamed the boy like a maniac as he visualized boobs, boobs of all shapes and sizes. As he did this his sacred gear responded to its wielder's desires. Boost 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 boobs boobs boobs, you son of a bitch. This actually caused the fighting to temporarily stop as soon as they registered Drake's little slip-up. Aha ha that was awesome Drake, now we are two of a kind. I think the red dragon boob emperor will suit you well. Zirkinus didn't even miss a bit in humiliating that stuck-up prick, he and Albion, his rival picked on him because he didn't like fighting and called him a pervert. Hehehe <laughs> now who has joined him in the pervert club. Naruto just shrugged as he went back to pulverizing the chicken. This was good if the kid has gained that much power, then it good for them. So he struck Razor in the gut launching him at Issei who caught him with his new move the dragon punch, which had enough power to drive Razor into the ground, creating a small crater. Rias and Akeno then started bombarding the crater with their spells forcing Razor to expend more energy healing himself. Razor slowly got out of the crater looking a bit winded. He was preoccupied with glaring at his opponents. He missed the small Nico who was standing in front of him with an impassive face as usual. All he heard was Nuts Cracker. Before his world blurred because of the pain he felt in his nether regions, the poor guy fell down clutching his man bits, while the other males instinctively held theirs. This also 
also gave Naruto another mischievous idea, he quickly got to Razor who was trying to get up and also made his attack known, Jade Dragon's nuts cracker and a swift kick to the nuts, and Razor was back in the ground feeling so much pain, this was followed by Issei issuing his own attack, the Red Dragon's nut stomp, which had him stomp Razor's nuts delivering even more pain, this was then followed by Ria's and Akeno bombarding the area with destructive spells again, Asia was doing her best to heal them of their fatigue and somewhat restoring their energy, Razor slowly got up from the onslaught looking worse for wear, he was healing, but it was much slower than before, you could also see a little bit of blood and bruises on his face, he also seemed to be failing to stand up straight, opting bend a little while widening his legs, he was shaky, almost like he could fall over unconscious anytime soon, it seems that even with the high regenerative abilities a few kicks to the nuts, and that regeneration meant jack when it comes to the pain, all in all he seemed to be close to his breaking point, which was the outcome they were hoping for, Naruto was now feeling uneasy, call it his shinobi sixth sense, he had a gut feeling that something was going to go horribly wrong, Long. they were winning that was clear but Razor hasn't used that hidden power he sensed before they entered the battlefield, somewhere unknown, the unknown figure sighed seeing Razor's imminent defeat, what did the figure expect? Naruto is known in his dimension as a person that can get out of impossible situations, Razor was bound to fail sooner or later, time to intervene, Razor you fool I told you not to underestimate him, and now you are barely even conscious to activate my gift, allow me to help you out, said the figure, sounding annoyed even from its distorted figure, it made a few motions which suspiciously looked like hand seals before a pulse of power was felt, back to the fight, Naruto's eyes widened when he felt that hidden power starting to bubble outwards, it reminded him so much like what he used to be when he used the nine tails power, this was power was off the charts, it was cold, it was lifeless, it was dangerous to the extent that it sent shivers down his spine, the power within Razor began to grow before it manifested in a tower of almost black flames that shot to the sky, the members of Team Rias backed away from the guy, but they were blown away by a powerful shock that came from the power up, they decided to regroup and re-strategize, but Naruto could see that his teammates were scared, they had never faced anything of this magnitude before, the Naruto he could compare it to the time he fought against the Ten Tails, in other words they were totally out classed, what the hell? Where did he get all this power from? shouted the almost hysteric Rias, the girl was shaking in fear, and Naruto couldn't blame her, this power was scary as hell, it could give him a run for his money in Kaiubi mode, before he fully cinched with Kurama, this was the feeling I was telling you about when I said I have a bad feeling about this, when we met the second time he felt different from how he felt before, he had a power which was sealed in him, and it seemed someone broke the seal, since he was almost unconscious to it himself, Naruto replied as he checked on his teammates to see if they were alright mainly Asia, Issei had his masochist ability so will be alright, the others had bumps and bruises, but otherwise they were okay, so what do we do now came the most important question from a best viewing room, this is insane, Razor should have that kind of power, it's just not possible shouted an equally shocked Sona, the other members of the rookies were also in shock, they knew Razor was powerful, but he didn't have this kind of power, Razor felt like he outclassed them, even Sererg would have a hard time fighting him, even if went all out, he would lose only by a narrow margin, Sererg loved to fight tough opponents, but he was not crazy to challenge that, his power feels like it bordering ultimate class devil in terms of quantity, but it feels strange, it feels like it's not his, but someone else's Sererg commented as he analyzed the power Razor was giving off, so he should be disqualified then? Sona asked, she really wanted her friend to come out of this alive, it's not a matter of winning anymore it's now a matter of surviving, not necessarily, if someone, a third party was seen in the field giving him the power it would have counted as interference, but that power came from within him so it could count as his he explained, no matter how much he wanted to get that prick disqualified, technicalities played here are a real pain, he only hoped his cousin would quit there is no shame in that, the phoenix family was also in shock as they saw the power their son displayed, the grimery fearing for their daughter's safety, had demanded to know know where Razor got that kind of power, all they could say was they didn't know either, Lady Grimory was openly shacking shouting for her daughter to surrender, but the Mayu, they watched the match with narrowed eyes, Akuja had already explained that the power Razor displayed was sealed within him, so he was not to be disqualified, Serzichas wanted to end the match, but a few factors hindered him, one his sister would hate him if they had a countermeasure planned, two it would show favoritism by a Mayu, and it would not good for a man of his status, Seraphol was now uncharacteristically serious as she looked at Razor with narrowed eyes, this power power felt odd for some reason, like it came from death itself, she could only do nothing as she knew interfering would cause a lot of problems for her, she could only hope Whiskers Tan has a super awesome power up to even the field, Grafia was also thinking similar thoughts, back to the fight, Razor soon got over the shock from his sudden power boost, he had expected this power to just shoot up without his command, he felt relieved that it did though, because he was about to pass out, it seems that
that his accomplice saw it fit to help him out more, and he appreciated that, he felt fresh, he felt power, and he felt like he could take on the world and win. He also berated himself for not taking the stranger's words to heart well he won't make the same mistake twice. You see this Riaz, this is the power that you face, you stand no chance against me, surrender and I won't damage my price, but if you don't, he finished his threat by making a small fireball which he launched into the small tree plantation there, which was reduced to ash in an instant, this was a testament of his power. But with all power ups comes great complications and limitations, and Naruto knew that, his first cinch with Kurama lasted a few minutes before it left him drained, and he lived with the guy since birth, he theorized that even though Razor was a phoenix, his body also has a limit to how much power it can take, especially if his body isn't used to this kind of power. Riaz on the other hand looked at her peerage, she was glad that they fought alongside her to free her, they were her precious people, and she wasn't going to put them in harm's way by fighting that monster, so the only option was to surrender, so she looked apologetically at her peerage not friends. Everyone thank you for your hard work, but this is the end, I am not going to let you get hurt badly for my sake, so I am going to, she was cut off by Naruto. Wait for five more minutes, we just have to survive that long before his power backfires on him, I admit plan A failed, so we go with plan B. And that would be a Keno asked. Zirkinus how are we doing buddy? Naruto asked his partner. In terms of power we are good, but ability wise we are screwed, only one from the small chicken has the ability that could help, but with that kind of power up fighting fire with fire is pointless, we need more abilities to counter his flames, Zirkinus replied, he had been analyzing the loot Naruto got from the fight, and so far their abilities sucked, Naruto just grinned as the gears in his head started to turn, oh with those three they might stand a chance if he used them correctly, don't worry buddy I know just what we need, looking at Ria's and Akeno girls, please forgive me for this, but it's for a good cause, they looked him confused until steel. And with that their panties were gone. They tried to look angry, but with a blush dawning their face it came out as cute, what the hell did he take their panties for anyway? Naruto took a sniff of the panties the sight in satisfaction, oh yeah that's the stuff, and don't worry Niko-chan I am coming for yours on a later date. This prompted Kaneko to hold her skirt defensively, while Asia pouted, MMH who knew the girl wanted in on the action. Alright let's begin Naruto brought out the loot in the jade energy bubble. He put Ria's and Akeno's panties in his pocket as he focused on the jade bubble or rather its contents. The spoils of war he liberated from his vanquished enemies, with a maniacal grin he started to eat, more like stuff his face, the undergarments like there was not tomorrow. It was like watching a pig eating a mountain of food. The others watched in horror as Naruto ate the underwear, no one could comment or even make a sound, their mouths just hung open, and they were lost for words. Best viewing room, tell me I am seeing things. Nope, this is actually happening right. Yap, that's just sick man. Back to the fight. Naruto had at last finished eating the undergarments in the bubble. He then focused his attention the three articles of clothing in his pocket. He started with Akeno's panties, whose owner just gave him a smile that promised him pain, lots of pain, then he went on to Ria's who just looked away in embarrassment, then went on to the last one whose owner was trying to make herself as small as possible under her sister's gaze. Oh Serafo was going to have a field day when this is over. Oh so that's why Sona wanted to kill Naruto said Ria's as she recognized her friend's panties. The others were just surprised that surprised that Naruto had the guts to steal the student council president's panties. Okay partner how much space do I have in shelf so far? Thus two slots are available so far so choose your abilities wisely. Okay give me lightning, water and pod, power of destruction, then shelf the phoenix ability and the light ability I don't want Akeno to have more reasons to skin me alive, everything else convert to power said Naruto, his partner complied with his request, converting three items to abilities. Abilities acquired shelving two abilities, converting everything else to power, adding to user's power. And with that for the second time during the match another contestant got a massive power up, Naruto struggled a bit as he felt the power rushing into his body, it started to surge outward, forming a jade pillar that shot upwards, his sacred gear was pulsing with power, but otherwise not changing. Naruto had never experienced power like this before. Well he had but the one he experienced was much more controlled than this one, plus it was doing wonders to his body, it really hurt a lot. His teammates watched wide-eyed more so Drake who had no idea his fellow dragon could do this, if he got his hands or rather claws on Officer Tiamat's panties shiver, Naruto's power had skyrocketed to match Razor's. It was amazing that Naruto had a trump card like this all along, it seems that he had planned ahead. Razor also could not believe what he was seeing he thought he had the advantage, but this pawn keeps taking that away from him, it seems the stranger had also underestimated Naruto. Unknown location. What the hell, that sacred gear is a useless artifact, it should be this powerful, I know you had a hand in this fate. 
shouted our mysterious figure as it once again also underestimated Naruto. Back to the fight. Naruto had somewhat accustomed himself to the power boost, thanks to his partner's help, but it still hurt though. He flexed his hands as he felt the power coursing through his body. He sighed in relief. Oh, how he missed having this much power. He looked at the fried chicken and smirked. So Razor what do you say you and me duck it out? Thanks for watching.